All right, we open with Jean. Jean, you cons. <laughs> I was like, who is Jean? Jean, is Jean. Is it Jean Luc Picard, for fuck's sake? Jean Luc Picard, yes. Yeah. When Q said Jean Luc Picard. Jean yeah, Luc sure, Picard. whatever. All right. Jean, Jean Neuer. <laughs> All right. Neuer. Jean, fine. Jean Noir. <laughs> so, you are at your house. I presume you probably have an apartment over the art gallery. Sounds about right, yeah. All right. So, you're there with your uh, wife. And, uh... Haru. Yep. So, you guys... You open your eyes... And it is the start of the night. You're in bed together. And I'm going to roll for everyone's blood points right now while I remember to. Miles, are you picking up any of this? Fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm listening, I'm listening. All right. <laughs> so, uh, Lesia, you are beginning with max blood points. So Lesia. Lesia. Uh, which is, for 10th, is 13? Uh, Yeah. Um, so Miles, you are also going to be starting at full. Nice. All right. Uh, Stalworth, you are going to be, be beginning at seven. Hey, question, man. Uh, mm -hmm. what's, what's my max blood? Uh, it should be 13th. Okay, cool. 13. Okay. Okay. And David, you are beginning at uh, eleven. All right. We're already a better start than Ryan. Yeah. Yeah, because Ryan never has any blood. All right, time to spend it all. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fix that immediately. So I spend a blood point to get hard. All right. <laughs> um. So Actually, your wife just kind of assumes that's what you're going to do, because as soon as she notices that you're finally awake, um, you know, yeah, right, sex. Sir, I'll do that then. she starts, you know, nibbling at your neck, you know. Okay, I spend a blood, I spend a blood point after all. Whispering <laughs> dirty phrases into your ear. All right. In French. In French. In French. <laughs> In her breathy voice. All right. So yeah, uh... Moaning softly. She's... She my belle Claude. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> she... Te gusta pene. <laughs> She's in your... Alright, so she gets on top of you, and, um... Does her business. There's also the fact, uh, she is your ghoul. Yes? Yeah. Alright. Um, you have not fed her a blood point recently. Of course I haven't. <laughs> Eleven points was just too high for you, Zach. Mm -hmm, yep. Mm -hmm. And so as yeah, she is, you know, moving around. Uh, Grinding. Yeah. Uh, she takes your wrists and, you know, asks you to open a vein for her. All right. I invite her to bite. All right. Ow. I'll do that way. Yep. So she tears into you. Hmm. So uh, that's gonna be three or four points of aggravated damage. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of those fines, babe. You're incapacitated. <laughs> hey, you wanted her to be a good retainer, so. Jesus. <laughs> All right. And then you're like, oh yeah, that's why I don't have a bite. The all-out attack animation plays, and I die. <laughs> <laughs> she used her limit break. All that's left is the erect member. <laughs> Out of the dust pile. <laughs> nice. Alright. So yeah, she takes a blood point from you. As right. uh, you two make love there in your apartment. And uh, eventually... You're finished, and she goes off to uh, take a shower. And you're left there, in bed, naked. Uh, I'll join her for a shower. Alright. 
I mean, I don't sweat, but I could get like her sweat falling onto me or whatever. So. Oh yeah, no, you're don't disgusting. Want to smell like sex. Yeah. Yeah, no. Don't want to smell you've, like sex you've got bodily fluids got, all over you. Yeah, you've got discarded bits of woman all about you. <laughs> discarded bits of woman. <laughs> effluvia. You are covered by female effluvia. Is that what it's called? That's what Mary yes, calls it. That is that is a Love term that. for female secretions, effluvia. Eluvia, nice. I'll have to remember that one. <laughs> for his girlfriend, when yeah. <laughs> she finally gets back. Ooh, hey, found, me a with new, found a new English word for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then she'll be like, Efrubia? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys shower off and, you know, head back out. And as you're heading back into the bedroom, you find your sire waiting for you. Oh. Uh, hmm. Hey. We're just coming out of the shower, right? Mm-hmm. Still naked. Still, Still naked. Are we, Still both, naked. are we both coming out right now? Yeah, you're both coming out. This is interesting. Okay. Uh, has she seen us naked before by any chance? I get the feeling probably. this is a regular occurrence. She's seen you naked, probably. Oh. Now, I'm hold sure on. I'm sure she's not hold offended a by a female. Noir. Jean Noir. He's not like his mirror image, right? Jean Noir is a loyal man. Mm-hmm. Monogamous. monogamous. Very monogamous. What clan are you, though? Toreador anti tribute. Oh, <laughs> no, you got naked before you were ever. Not a chance. Before a you chance. ever embraced. I've got the true love merit. Come on, Zach. I put good points into that true love merit. Mm -hmm. Well, that doesn't mean as we know from <laughs> I know how you. I like how you just assume that it means sex. It could mean a lot of things. You know. I'm just, I'm you, just making have, sure that it's not, I'm just making awesome. sure that we're on the same page as to what it doesn't mean, okay? Mm -hmm. So you may not have had sex, but you had to get naked because the human body is also a work of art. Anyway. <laughs> uh, what was her first name again? Once I, oh, so, uh, hello, Olivia. All right. That's a little bit familiar. Usually your sire insists oh, sorry, on... Sorry, 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 I forgot, Zach. Let me start over. Bonjour, milady. <laughs> right. As he bows, does he have to bow, too? Actually, oh, that would be appropriate. You might have to genuflect, actually. That's more Catholic. There you go. <laughs> you know. There you go. Whatever you prefer. Do that, then. All right. So she uh, points at your wife, snaps her fingers, and then says, get out. Um, and instantly, uh, your wife is cowed and just leaves. Away naked. Yeah. Clutching wow, a towel. that sort of relationship? <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping for some more friendly terms, but okay. Uh, to you, though, she says, uh, you know, come here, pumpkin. Well, I best follow her. I'm going to pick up, like, the blanket or something to wrap around myself. All right. So she uh, has you, you know, sit down next to her, and she puts her arms around you. I will voice my complaints at her attitude towards my wife. Uh, darling, we're going to need to, unfortunately, strip you of these attachments at some point. Uh, perhaps your new pack will get around to it. Please, you'll see to it. <laughs> <laughs> Leave it to Zach to make getting a pack bad. <laughs> You know, White Wolf actually wrote a whole book about how paths are actually bad. Yeah, and exactly. only you would take that to heart. <laughs> Alright. Any All right. other player, you know? But whatever. So. Uh, she said, So you know that you have been, obviously, are being moved to a new pack, and this is the day that it's supposed to occur. So her showing up isn't 100% out of the blue. Although you kind okay. of expected more of a knock at the door. Yeah. Well, okay, so I know what this is about. Yeah. All right, so, well, then I will ask her, is this the day? It is the day. Are you excited, Pumpkin? Uh, I'll have to find out what they're like to make a decision. Hmm, I see. Well, don't worry, uh, she says. I'm sure you'll make uh, good friends with all of them very quickly. Now... Uh, darling. Uh, 
<laughs> that as well. She says, uh, have you decided whether or not you're going to be taking along uh, your pet with you? Taking along? How far are we going? You, uh... I haven't insisted that you uh, join us at the, uh, the pack lair while you've been with the widows. Uh, however, almost certainly, uh, your new, uh, Ductus is going to insist that you remain at the pack lair for some time. Can you tell me what the pack lair is going to be like? Uh, I've never been there myself, so... Unfortunately, I can't. Okay, well, your experience. Mm -hmm. given, given past experience, would you say it's safer to leave Haru here? <laughs> uh, she laughs. Uh, for a while, actually. It starts to make you uncomfortable. And then says, uh, if you... you <laughs> if you care about uh, that thing's well-being, you should leave it here. Uh, do I sense any <laughs> maliciousness in that, the way she said that? Any deceit? Uh, there was maliciousness in the way uh, she laughed for a while while she was thinking about the question, but uh, in terms of actual deceit, no. Okay, then. Alright, well, if that's your advice, I'll talk with her and maybe consider her staying here. Uh, she says, excellent. She can make, uh, she can continue to run the business while you're away. Okay. Now, Pumpkin. And she kind of, you know, gently, basically pulls you over so your head is kind of resting on her lap. Okay. And she starts... She's clothed, right? Yeah, she's clothed. Uh, and she starts gently stroking your hair, and she says, Now, Pumpkin, you won't do anything to embarrass Sire, will you? Absolutely not. Mm. I owe you my life. That's true. I just wanted to make absolute certain that on your own you're not going to do anything that looks, that reflects poorly on me. I will do my best to make you look amazing. I already look amazing, but thank you. I will do my best not to ruin that. <laughs> and of course, if you were to fail, you know what to expect. Yep. Excellent. Well, then there's no problem. So she lifts you back up, kisses you on the cheek, and then takes you by the arm and starts escorting you out. Sorting me out of the room right now? Yep. Uh, pardon me, milady. Ah, yes. Should I, not, yes. should I not get dressed? Perhaps you should cover that. And she yes. makes a vague hand motion towards your penis. Uh, were you hoping to bring me to the new group <sighs> right Uh, yes, we'll be leaving as soon as you're dressed. Uh, could I have but a minute to even inform my wife that this is happening? Ah, uh, yes, you should let her know that uh, it will be expected to maintain things here and continue the payments. Yes, okay, so excellent. Could you just wait outside the room just for a moment while I talk with her? And I'll get dressed at the same time to keep it quick. Alright. She walks up to you and then kind of holds your chin in her hands. And she says, Don't fuck with me. And then kisses you on the other cheek and says, of course, I'll wait downstairs for you, darling. All right. Whatever. You have a possessive oh. sire. Yeah, well, of course, Doc's going to find a way to bite me in the arse for getting a good sire. <laughs> <laughs> she's good willing to help you. Good's a subjective term, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is she's very term. friendly towards yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, sure, whatever. Okay, so Haru comes in. I'm getting dressed. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, so update, I've got a new group I've got a pal around with, and I believe it would be safest for you to stay here. 
she says, uh, is it, I mean, you're not going to be here? No. Where, I mean, where can I meet with you? I'll have to sort that out when I know where I'm going. Will you text me when you get there to let me know you're okay? Of course. Alright, so she embraces you. I'll hug her back. Alright. We'll be able to keep in contact, no problem. Alright. Well, she goes off to make breakfast. Okay. For herself. For herself. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and, uh... And you can, if there's anything special you want to pack, any little, you know, keepsakes or anything, you can do so. Uh, well, so let's see. Let's run a few things. Right, so, do I have a mobile phone? A what? A phone. A mobile phone. Oh, yeah. This is, is like 2018, day, right? right? We're in 2018? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can assume we Very have... Good. Now, uh, do I know my wife's number off by heart and the house number off by heart in case I lose this phone? Uh... Hopefully, yes. <laughs> uh, I will, alright. In some, when whatever meantime, I will be going over these numbers. Okay. I got the feeling there's going to be some confiscation or whatever. Yeah, probably. <clears throat> good, good plan. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Learning else? the whims of his sire. Um, yeah, okay. Let's see. What possessions would I have relevant to this sort of game? Like, you know what I mean? Do I have a gun and stuff? Um... Probably your sire would have arranged, would have given you one when you needed it. Ah, oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, but you probably don't have one on hand. You could have gone to the trouble to, um, like, start arranging to purchase one. Um, but that's up to you. Come on, you know you have a favorite outfit. You're a Toreador. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll 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 pass I'll pack my good clothes. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh hopefully I have some combat ready clothes as well. I've been with All right. pack for a little while now. I should know what they're about. You should get so yeah, you can have some reinforced clothing as armor. Alright, does that actually add anything to stuff? Yes, that is two for bashing soak and one for lethal soak. Nothing for bullet soak. Oh, that's better than nothing. Thank you. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to get a gun at some stage. And, uh... Yeah. Okay. I guess that'll have to do. Okay. So when you head downstairs, uh, your sire is waiting for you. And she is already on She's her motorcycle. Tapping her foot. Okay, and... I'll kiss my wife goodbye. Alright. All right, so you get on and ride off into the night. So, Lesia. 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 Uh, you have been uh, at the lair for some time, longer than the others. Um, you're the only one, any player character that's currently in residence. Um, and you have been told by uh, the bishop, your pack ductus, mm -hmm. that uh, you are going to... Um, meet with another new member of the pack uh, basically up on the ground floor level and then you're gonna li lead them through you know introduce them to everyone you're sort of the the concierge okay and this is the haven of the seven samurai correct yes okay Alrighty. so i will at what time do i have any time before then uh, you have a little bit of time do while you know jean was Jean was off having sex. Oh, okay, so. Yeah. This is, all right, so I will, um, I don't know what I'll do. Tidy up a bit, I guess, maybe in the uh, foyer, wherever I'm meeting him, up there at the first floor. Are there any, like, disgusting homeless there that maybe I should? Do oh, I there are homeless do, all over the, the main building up there. Do I know, he's, do I know he's a Toreador? Um, no. Okay. So never mind then. I'll just go up there and... All you've basically been told is that his sire is a paladin. 
So And that means what to me? Uh that she is it's kind of like a Sabbat version of an Archon or a sheriff. Um she has some authority. The appropriate way to address her is my lady. Okay. Um and she is coming with this possibly individual. She okay. may be. All right, so we're just up there on the first floor at the uh, at the door. Oh, All right. <laughs> so, uh, Jean, you pull up. Uh, your sire pulls up on her motorcycle, and she pulls up outside of what looks like an abandoned building. Um, just out in kind of not a great area. Yeah, well, I should be at least a bit used to that. Yeah, so you can look, you can see inside, the windows are all boarded up. There are, like, fires and things inside. It looks like this is some sort of homeless camp. Yeah, okay, sounds about right. All right. So she gets off motorcycle, stretches, and kind of sniffs at the air, and says, well, this seems nice. Yeah, secure. Yeah, so she links arms with you and starts taking you inside. I'll play along. All right. And as you pass through into the first floor area, there's a bunch of homeless people, and there's one person that kind of stands out. Um, and so why don't you describe your character? So what you see is a uh, smallish African-American uh, woman. Not African-Canadian? Uh, no, I am actually from the French Caribbean. Okay. So African-French. So African-French probably is what I actually am. Um, so, and she's youngish, probably late 20s, early 30s. That's what she appears anyway. Um, and, uh, and I will walk over and I will greet the female as my lady. Alright. And say, I am Lysia. Here to meet you from the, uh, representative of the, uh, pack of the Seven Samurai. Alright. Well, she accepts your she greeting. Samurai. Yes, that is the name of the pack you're going to be joining. Oh god. That's literally a Yu-Gi-Oh thing. Well, no it's not. <laughs> I think you'll find it predates you. <laughs> Just a little does. bit. Uh, yeah, I think you'll find that it does. <laughs> well, it's also a Yu-Gi-Oh thing, let me say it like that. There you All go. right. There there you rare go. That's, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I will make sure that the homeless realize they are with me so that the yeah. homeless will take no notice. Yeah, some of the homeless were kind of coming over towards you yes, guys so threateningly when before Lesia came over. So, uh, so like, I know uh, Mary's character was already expecting us, but uh, out of curiosity, do paladins have a look to them? Um, not really. Um, some of them kind of maybe wear nicer clothes or some sort of jewelry that indicates their status, but usually yeah. your sire doesn't. But since okay. you were a male uh, yeah, and she was a female, I, I and I was told she was the paladin. Yeah. That's why I was I did, uh, I was reading a bit and it said, like, uh, identifying tattoos and gangs and that sort of stuff. Would Olivia do something like that, though? Uh, probably not. All right, good. All right, and um, so why don't you introduce what your character looks like, David? Okay, so I'm Jean Noir, a... Uh, French uh, Quebecois, 38, I think, when I was embraced. And what's my appearance? That matters, doesn't it? It's only two, so I'm certainly average. You wouldn't think I'm a Toreador, wow, except you for do my not come across. Yeah, yeah, so Lizzie is a little surprised here as she, of course, she's stunned by the paladin. Well, you don't know that he's a Toreador. He just looks average. Oh, okay. But she's beautiful, right? She's attractive, yes. Do I know that he is her child? Yes. So I would look at her and think Toreador, but then I'd look at him and think, no, she might, maybe she's Zemitsi. The only thing that you really know about this guy is that uh, there was an arrangement for a computer to be delivered to his room in the Haven. Mm -hmm. So presumably he's some kind of hacker. Hmm. So, so if I'm anything, thinking Toreador. you're impressed by the two appearance. <laughs> yeah. Mm, well, I guess he's a little bit. Yeah, so you were probably expecting a bespectacled fucking. Yeah, some sort of geek. With but a... no. Okay. Not too pocket. bad. Not too bad. All right. Anyway, I keep all this to myself. Poker face on the uh, yeah, on the facial features. Yeah, okay. Well, uh, your sire says to you, uh, Jean, 
John. John. Uh, looks like your new friend has already arrived, so I'll leave you, you know, in her care. You obviously don't need your sire tagging along while okay, you... now I know that. ...while you're introduced to everyone. But why don't you just run along and talk to some of the homeless people for just a minute and let me speak with your new friend? Very well, my lady. Okay. Head off. Do I need to make a gesture to the homeless people to let them know he is fine? Um, you're talking with him basically okay. kicks so in their dominate. Okay, good. I don't want you being attacked. That would be bad. Yeah, Jean, if you want to give me a perception plus empathy. John. John. <laughs> Seven. How long did it take us specialty, to get Eva? Specialty in careful. <laughs> So looking around at some of these homeless people, they kind of, they seem to just look over you, like they don't even notice you, and you start to get the impression that maybe they've been hypnotized or something. It looks like their minds have been uh, altered somehow. Is Jean familiar with the concept of Domine? Um, only in the vaguest sense. You know that vampires are capable about powers of entrancement. Um... So you don't know the specifics of Dominate necessarily, but you know the basic idea. Yeah, so I'd be able to associate that with this. Yeah. Okay. okay. So, once he is uh, a little ways away, she says, uh, now, Lysia, uh, I am obviously entrusting my little pumpkin to you. I just want to make certain that you'll look after him. Of course, my lady. He's a very special little boy. And sometimes he needs a little bit of care. I just want to make certain that you will see to it. I am a voodoo priestess trained in all of the um, sabbat rituals. I will be sure to give him extra special care. All right. Well, she nods and then says, very well. Uh, hopefully we'll find a way to become good friends. I look forward to it. All right. And as she was talking to you, she was basically kind of like running her finger along the side of your face and then along the jugular of your neck. Um, and then as soon as she's done talking with you, she turns around and just walks back to her motorcycle. And then as she passes by where Jean is kind of looking at some of the homeless people, she snaps her fingers and then points back at... And then when he looks over, points over at you. And then she just keeps walking. Okay. Huh. All right. So the two of you are left alone together. So Jean is a mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunate, unwilling, perhaps. Mama's uh, boy, right? In what was room. what was your character's name again? Lysia. Lysia. All right, cool. Well, uh, Lysia, this uh, pack of yours—is it yours? Are you priest leader? Have we decided that yet? Um, you're not the priest yet, but you're making plans as soon as you become true Sabbat, which um, Yamamoto has told you will happen sometime in the near future. Okay. Um, once that happens, you'll be the priest. Um, and I'm assuming... Okay, so was I there during the history of this pack? Not so really. So I have been new Yeah, to you're just... So I've been here long enough to realize what's happened. Yeah. But... You've been here for probably like a few weeks... Okay. But I only know the Archbishop and the and the Bishop. Uh, with us, right? Yeah, you know the Bishop and you know the Twins. Okay, and the Twins, there we go. Um, okay. Are you going to enlighten Jean as to all this? Well, that's what I, I'm trying to figure out where to go from your comment. Which was, again, now you're going to have to remember, what, what did he just say something about the, uh, 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 are you the priest? priest um, uh, I, I am not the pack is in disarray at the moment. Um, but yes, I have made preparations to be priest. Uh, disarray. Mm -hmm. Yes. How many members? How many members in the seven summer? Um, I will look at him with a look like, really? Um, seven. But currently... Four. Uh, there are three. <laughs> <laughs> well, four, four. Inc okay. including you. Okay. Five, including him. 
Five, um, including him. Sorry. Who else? Is it Bishop? The bishop? There's the Bishop, there are the twins, and, and then there's you, and then there's so, him. Five, including you. All right, all right. So, give me the rundown. Are the other guys coming, or can you tell me? What um, we about? will be... Uh, have I been notified of the other? You have not been told about anyone else. I have not been told. You know that someone will come eventually, but there's no specifics. This is the um, only... Yes, well, as, yes, and as you well know, in the Sabbat, things happen, and there were several members that did meet the final death. Um, I have not been told of any others, who, because I've not made preparations for any of the rooms, right? Um, no. Yeah, so I have only made preparations for you so far. I would assume okay. that the other rooms well. would be inhabited eventually. So, give us a summary of this past. Um, I don't know much about it to begin with. Do, what do I know about the twins? That really wasn't in here. So, yeah. Um, you know that uh, Yamamoto is the bishop. Um, he's also the pack ductus. Actually, maybe I'll just take you around the haven. <laughs> and we'll, uh, sure. and you can gather yeah, what good. you will from that. So, here we okay. are on the, uh... On the first floor. So this uh, building is a homeless shelter. Obviously the homeless are under the control of the bishop. Um, if you noticed, they uh, are very wary of outsiders. When you first came in, I wanted to be up here to make sure that uh -huh. you, they knew you were with, with the pack. Um, so, yeah, so this is the first floor. Um, we do have some government workers that also come by here to check upon the homeless. Uh, they are also dominated by the bishop. Um, this uh, building is essentially designated by the city council to be a homeless shelter. And it is where we make our haven. So you'll notice okay. here on the wall is a whiteboard. <laughs> <laughs> This is after you've taken them down into the actual haven oh, itself. Okay. So, here, at the entrance to our actual haven. There's is, basically like a hidden hatch that she opens up and takes you down. Is the whiteboard. Uh, this is where you will reserve the pack vehicle, which happens to be a Chevrolet Monte Carlo two door coupe, <laughs> which is parked up on the street. Um, okay. Um, the bishop also likes to drive a motorcycle. Do not touch it. Just don't even go anywhere near it. Sure. Don't. Okay. Um, we'll skip over that. I'm not exactly sure what the layout is. Um, so as we uh, run down the hallway... Um, scroll down um so uh that door there leads to the hellhound lair don't go in there um, hellhound lair yes uh their names are phobos and demos the uh, the previous their previous owner hellhound. their previous owner met the final death we're not i'm working on building a relationship but just don't go in there um, the we keep that door locked a hellhound? So, uh, give me, uh, Jean, what's your self-control? Self-control? Yeah. Three. Alright. <laughs> so as you're saying, what's a hellhound? She said, obviously, not to get too close, but you're kind of peering at the door. It's like a lowered set of bars kind of you start to peer a little bit inside and as you do say what's a hellhound like this giant dog leaps at the bars towards you and starts barking at you uh it's basically a very large dog uh with like bone spurs and things various flesh crafting uh that's been performed on it and uh yeah so that was yeah. Phobos. As I said, <laughs> don't 
go near them. I won't. All right, so here on your left is the library. I don't know if you're going to <laughs> Right reading. next to the Hellhound. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, there's a number of magical books in there. Um, one of the past Ooh. former uh, members was a Tremere. So we are quite fortunate to have a large collection of hermetic tomes. Wow. Um, that over there on your left is the bishop's room. Um, again, don't enter. Um, and then over here on the right is the archbishop suite. She doesn't usually stay here with us that often, but we keep a room for her when she does show up. Okay. Um, or any other important guest would obviously go in there. Um, they're connected again on the left, connected to Yamamoto's uh, bedroom. There is Yamamoto's office. Um, he is our bishop. Um, and, uh, and again, just don't bother him unless necessary. <clears throat> All right, so now right. we're into the more interesting areas of the Haven. Um, so this here, these two rooms here are, um, these are the twins' rooms. Um, so if you ever do get to go inside, you will find that they are exact mirror images of each other stationed there. I try not to get okay. too close. Um, across from them here is the rumpus room, <clears throat> which was a name the given room. by the twins. That room is actually open. And I will open the door there to let you see inside. Uh, you will see that it is entirely blacklit, <clears throat> and there are various splashes of bodily fluids covering every conceivable surface within the room. Um, it has all manner of sex toys and uh, sadomasochistic gear. Um, there is, in the very center of the room, is a bed, which, if you went up and investigated, we would see has some magic fingers installed into it. Um, uh, you'll see on the wall, or uh, on the bookshelf, the massive collection of porn. Um, some of it has handwritten labels. <laughs> I can't wait. I can't wait to read Zach's books. Am I right, love? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you do notice that they have an original print of Dogfucker starring Linda Lovelace. I don't know if you're impressed by that or not, but there you go. They have a copy of Lost in the Woods. <laughs> They do have a copy of Lost in the Hood. You immediately find that. And and Lysia notices that he's over... <laughs> he immediately goes immediately over the porn collection and starts... <laughs> with his finger going along the title, Lost seeing exactly in the what's hood. there. So, uh, <clears throat> so, you hear a little... <clears throat> also, it's the, gay porn <laughs> with a bunch of black guys. <laughs> That's <clears throat> what he pulls out. <laughs> so I shall clear my throat. All right. No, Jean Noir wouldn't pull that out. Mm. If I was there, I'd be like, holy shit, they have lost in the world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, well, if, if this is where your inclination lies, I'm sure the twins will be quite fond of you. Huh, if we shall uh, continue on. So, um, over here again, we have the dojo. Again, I will open the door and let him see that there's... A lot of exercise equipment and punching bags. And yeah, so speaking of dojo, um, how far do you guys take the samurai team? Some people take it further than others. <laughs> Some people take it further than others. Okay. You have seen inside the bishop's bedroom, but like only one time. Mm -hmm. I caught a glimpse. Yeah. Okay. All right, so there, um, here is the garden. The um, garden is actually closed. There is a oh, do not is disturb okay. on there. So I will point to the closed door, um, 
Who, do, who runs the garden? Is this is this the bishop? The yeah, the... from what you know, the bishop is the one in there right this now. This is again. Must, again. Must be a Zen garden. But we can go in if he's not in there. If he's not in there, yeah. Okay. It is open to everyone, but once okay, but, that's uh, one of the rules is when there is a do not disturb on there. I believe the bishop may be meditating um, right now, so let's just move on. Uh, okay, here's a question. Do you know how old the bishop is? Um, Lesia, Lesia does not. I do not know. His full name is. I have to look it up. There we go. It is Yamamoto uh, Tsunemoto. Uh, Tsunetomo. Yamamoto okay. Tsunetomo. All right. So, um, but you are welcome to use the garden uh, when it is unoccupied. Okay. So, this is my bedroom here. Um, and over here is your bedroom. And I will open the door for you, and you will see a room which is covered with a variety of mirrors. Some oh, I think funny. yours is actually not updated. Let me give you my updated version. Oh, okay. Because I hope oh, that here this we was. Go. Yeah, no, that okay. was, yeah. No. All right, well, never mind. That's my bad. Down. Gotta go down. There we go. There we go. So, uh, I'm sorry, your room was previously inhabited by a Ravnos. Um, he was a bit of a con man. Um, you will see as you look into the room that it is, it contains um, a few very expensive antiques. The carpet is plush and very soft. You've got a flat screen TV and a Blu-ray player. Um, and you have a collection of, uh, the Criterion collection, which, does he have a copy? Yeah, though, it looks like the last movie that the Ravnos was watching was the Apu trilogy. Yes. Oh, that's a very good trilogy. Um, so you have the Criterion collection films and, um, some psychological horror movies. Um, you also see the computer still in its boxes. Um, that your, your sire, sire uh, yeah. sent over. Your sire said that she was going to leave you a present at the new uh, haven. And presumably this is it. All right. Um, you have a four-poster bed with curtains. Um, do, 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 on the wall looking down. And there is a mural of a bizarre bluish mask with bulging orange eyes and spikes emerging from the image, from the edges, which is looking down upon you as you lie in bed. Why? The mask is depicted in such a way that the eyes follow the viewer around the room. I think I have that around here. Um, there is also a safe in the corner of your room, but... Uh, the Ravenous was the only one with the... We, we haven't opened it. Nobody's opened it. Okay, so uh, so first things first, I will, to the best of my ability, not be looking at the fucking thing on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the first thing I ask you is, uh, can I, if this is my room, can I have things removed? Uh, you may decorate your room however you wish. Alright, I might need some help getting rid of that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> As you point to that. So give me actually a perception plus awareness. Four. Yeah, when you start to talk about taking it down, you get the impression that it hears you and it doesn't like what you're saying. Maybe I'll keep it. <laughs> All right, the waves of displeasure lessen somewhat. It's pretty cool. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> <laughs> Scary, but cool. In a cool way. Scary really in a cool, cool way. Really cool thing. Looks like, a, looks like it has some sort of function. Who knows? Aha. Uh -huh. Do I have any occult that I can... Can I just check really quick? I'm yeah, sure you've I'm actually sure. already kind of investigated because mm -hmm. it seems weird, but you're not familiar with it. Mm -hmm. It's not Koldunic in any way. You definitely know that. But does it have any sort of magical aura to it? Mm, it does have a sort of an aura to it. Um, it looks kind of, you're not sure, but it looks, obviously, it's some kind of scary mask thing. Sometimes, uh, like, tribal cultures will utilize, use maxes, masks for, like, hexing people and things like that. So it's possible that may be what it's about. 
Well, I don't think he would want to hex himself. No. Yeah, why you would paint a mask like that on the wall. But if it has some sort of occult significance, that's the only thing you can think of mm -hmm. that usually scary masks like this are used for. Mm, well, I'm sure I have no Or it, sometimes they're used, uh, people will use them to, like, scare away monsters you can put on a mask. and. I would think that it would be rather to protect this Ravenos rather than to hurt himself. I don't know why. He yeah, again, you're not really familiar with why people would, would paint a mask on the wall. These are just the no okay. things you know about masks right. in general. Okay, so that is pretty much it. Um, there are some other unoccupied rooms down the hall, but I'll let you get settled in. If you need me, I will be over in the uh, in the library. Okay. Um, oh, and you know that the twins are currently in the den area. Oh, okay, yes, in the den. What was the den? The den was it's not going to be on that one. It's just on the uh, okay. the PDF. Okay. So um, so yeah, so the room is uh, so the twins are in the den. Um, you're welcome to go meet them if you wish as well. Uh, Madame Kayla Den. <laughs> I'm sorry. What's what? the Den? Oh, what's, what's the Den? The den? <laughs> um, the Den. I don't have the Den on. It's here, on the PDF. So. On the PDF. Okay, sorry. Apparently, I have another. Okay. Let's see. I've also got it here. is the one I have corrected. Oh, there it is, the den. Uh, there this... actually, yeah, there are a couple places. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I haven't actually go gone over the escape routes with him yet, have yeah, I? Yeah, you may want to give him the full rundown. All right, well, let me let me uh, get him, let me, he's carrying his bag, right? I'll let him yeah. get settled in. So when, once you're settled in, I will... Um, there's a few there's a few escape routes and other things of importance that we should probably go over. Yeah, you may want to start with the armory. So I did skip quite a few things. Um so anyway, I'll let him settle in however he wishes to. Alright. Yeah, so I guess I'll get the computer set up would be the first thing. Okay. Yeah, so you notice uh, the wireless functionality has been physically disabled on it. Um, what? It's specifically probably because uh, if it's going to be used as a hacking rig, you don't want your wireless set up on it. Um, you want to have, there is a, like, Ethernet actual cable connection in that has been put into the room. Okay. The okay. idea is, is when you're not using it, you don't want to be passively connected to the Internet. That's pretty dumb. So you plug it in, and then when you're not using it, you unplug it. So you're completely disconnected. Okay, so, so quick uh, quick investigation. Is there Wi-Fi in the house by any chance? In the Haven? Yes, there is Wi-Fi. Okay, good. So I will message my wife to let her know that I have arrived and I seem to be in a safe place. Okay. She says, is it nice? It's functional. <laughs> You say looking up at the mask. <laughs> I, I specifically said I would not be looking up at the fucking mask. <laughs> All right. All right. Well, she says, you know, let me know, you know, if you need anything. I'll just be holding down the fort here. Yep. I'll tell her. I'll see if I was, uh, how advisable visiting her will be and all the rest. All right. I mean, we didn't go that far, did we? Um, you're a little ways away. Um, she would have to drive here, but you're in the same city. Um, yeah. from what you uh, heard, I won't, I won't message that though. <laughs> no, you did actually notice. Um, some of the uh, there were no aid workers present, but some of their you did see like some logos on some of their stuff that was left there. Um, and it is a like uh, it's a nonprofit that you are familiar with. Um, okay. it's a sort of religious, I mean, it is run by Catholics, but it's not super religious. Yeah. Okay, um, I gotcha. and they do work with some of the homeless. You're familiar with them. Um, so that could be one possible way. Sure. All right. So 
uh, hmm. Okay, so I'll just let her know. Uh, I'll actually, speaking of, I'll run by her the idea that we should be careful with messages, like, you know, never mention where either of us are and stuff like that, you know? Try to be vague about things. If in, Just try to keep in mind that this could be hacked at any stage. All right. So yeah. Uh, anything I need to do with the computer? Um, no, you pretty much you got it set up and it turns on. There's nothing you need to do right now, unless there's something that you want to do. Is there? I don't know. No. Huh? Buy a gun. <laughs> uh, you're gonna have to actually go down to a gun store to do that. Well then. Nah, no, not really. Alright. Well, you're set up for when you do need to use it. Okay, well, I have no idea what to do. Well, you can find Lesie I'll in the library to uh, continue Lizzie the tour. Lesie told you she would be in the library when you were... Yeah, I think I'll just go back to meet Lesie. Alright, so yeah, he comes in. Okay. Alright, well, let me go over some security issues um, here. So up here we have the uh, security room. Um, wait, no, we don't have a security room. But you will notice that there are dead bolts on all of the doors with police bars, especially on the bishop and archbishop doors. Okay, um, that's good. Yeah, this place looks like you're basically locked in. Yeah, I was gonna say. So have a, have one. Uh... So the bishop and archbishop doors both have pit traps. Yeah, there are some pit other. traps around. She'll, you know, Leslie can basically point out to you. There are some so pit I'll traps. There are some false point. doors. So I will point those. Out um. To yeah. If you, uh, you notice that she did just pass by some doors. Didn't tell you anything about them. Didn't really mention them before. Um. Turns out if you'd opened them, they probably would have killed you. Yes. So I'll point those out now, so you know not to okay, well, Beside uh, the hellhound door. Don't bother with that one either. Here is the armory. Um, you will see on the wall that it has like seven machetes and knives. Um, there is a silver-plated okay. machete, a silver-plated fire axe, and a silver-plated bowie knife. Um, there are also a scoped Super Red Hawk with both regular and silver ammo, a Beretta M9 with both regular and silver ammo. Are you getting the feeling that we um, come up against some vampire or uh, some werewolves? So, uh, so out of character, I presume Jean doesn't know about werewolves yet. Uh, yeah, you. I mean, you've heard of the Wolfman, like the movie, but you have never met a werewolf. You've I never even know. heard that they were real. Lizzie okay, knows, so, right? Um, so, so Lizzie, you figure. Um, the silver. You want to explain? So, uh, apparently, we, uh, the pack has had some trouble with werewolves in the past. So, werewolves are a thing. As are vampires, apparently. There are four Ithaca... Cool, cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> Get white people from first world countries. I know, I'm like... <laughs> Yes, they're a thing. How did you not know this? As are zombies and fairies and, you know, ghosts. It's all there. Anyway. Okay, well, I mean, so so first off, let's see. How long have I been a vampire? Um, probably not that long. You know, a few months, maybe. Yeah, okay, so I'll just, I'll just... Well, hmm, then again, I don't know her too well. No. I'd probably be afraid of revealing that on a newbie, but I think I've already done that inadvertently, so I'll I, be like, she right, I haven't been in this too long. She's aware. Yeah, I haven't been in this too long, so feel free to fill me in on anything that might seem obvious to you. I will be happy to educate you, Jean. Quit gawking, Thanks. fish. <laughs> uh, there are also, there's also an Ithaca M37. Half of them cut down. Oh, there's four of them. Half of them cut down. Uh, four MP5s. Uh, six AR-15s and a single scoped M82A1. I have no idea what I'm saying here. I'm just like, <laughs> putting it out there. Well, uh, I know, I know most of them except okay. the last one. So there are also four medium ballistic vests. Uh, 
It also has all of the equipment for firearms maintenance and pressing of homemade bullets. So we okay, are well armed. So, um, here's something. Uh, are these communal? Like for everyone? or These are the communal guns. You're expected yes. to return them when you're finished using them. But they are here. So are do you know how to handle a gun? I do. I've been trained. There is actually, you notice, there is like a clipboard with a little like basically check-in sheet where you mark down what you're taking out so that okay, good. people know who has what. So I will I'm assume... Actually, I'm actually a bit handy with maintenance too if you need that. Well, we may because I uh, have other um, ways of protecting myself rather than firearms. Okay, well why don't you go into that a little? I already told you, Voodoo Priestess. And what does that entail? <laughs> oh, she'll roll her eyes. So over here <laughs> is the entrance to the catacombs. Okay. Uh, we currently have three prisoners. Oh. <laughs> okay, why? Uh... So, uh, Abraham and Ariel are both Toreador. Jose is a pander. I'm not sure what a pander is. It's a Sabat Caitiff. Okay, Sabat Caitiff. Um, the Toreador, we do have a Toreador siren child. That's Abraham and Ariel. Um, that they were found to be conspiring against the Archbishop. Um, and Jose was caught attempting to make contact with the Camarilla to arrange a defection. Wow. So you don't really see them. What you see are like just giant blocks of concrete uh, with like a little hole and like a funnel next to them that leads down into there. Nice. All right. So we have, okay, I do not understand this. You have central security. The video game machine is a Sega Dreamcast. That's yes. our central security. If you read the PD, machine? that is specifically something that is oh, in the, the additions. Okay. Okay, I didn't realize I had to go back to. Yes. The... There's always a Very game console. Confused. Obviously, there is. It mentions a game console specifically because I took a generic location, right, but so... I wanted to give you a little more flavor right, than so that. So here is our uh, our central security room this around so that I can read it in a fairly decent manner. Da, 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 da. Um, so uh, in, within this room there is a table that has a control console on it uh, and many monitors um, that obviously show various footage from security cameras. Uh, the lights and the switches for the smoke alarms, the motion sensors, the sprinkler system and all the cameras control uh, is in this room. There is a ghoul usually here. Um, he would be asleep at night. During the day uh, to watch over things. Um, so there is also a television and a video game machine and that video game machine is a Sega Dreamcast. And you notice that it has all the major releases for that console. <laughs> Jean obviously knows Instantly and about also, the Dreamcast. Uh, the cult classics such as Omicron Nomad Soul. Just so you know. A little homage oh there to you weirdo video game people. Does Miles um, know anything about the Dreamcast? <laughs> Miles knows everything about the Dreamcast. Alright, there are also no, I don't. <laughs> there are also a lot of cheap, <laughs> There were fighting games on it. There were also a lot of cheap romance Before my novels. Time. And bad horror compilations. So there is a bookshelf in here with cheap romance novels for you, Jean, as you try to um, feed your true love. I don't know. You know, I, uh, I'd imagine that. Uh, I'd imagine Jean and his wife are the kind of wholesome couple that would like read shit like that together. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's where this is. All right, so right. now, well, let me go over escape routes one and route two before we go meet the twins. Um, oh, yes, very so, important. Uh, escape route number one goes through a, um, a donut shop. Uh, the owner has been dominated um, to see us as just his friends and loyal customers. Um, 
Um, is that a reference to uh, an anime? No. Oh. Okay. And so he has a gun under the counter and will um, and will defend us. Escape route two um, goes into the sewer. Um, within the sewer is where the Nosferatu live. We have a good relationship with the Nosferatu. Um, I, we will eventually uh, run through. I will show you the route to get to their city if there is ever a problem. Their city? Yes. A sewer city? Yes. All right. So, um, so that is there. And so then we will head over to the uh, den... And I'll open the door, and 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 you'll see that it is um, that it's just covered in television screens. Um, a one wall is painted with a beautiful mural, showing a beautiful female vampire basking in the sun, surrounded by mortal servants, uh, next to a sea of blood. Um, the other two walls are covered in old movie posters. Um, there's big, comfortable furniture in the room. There is another computer here. There's a pool table. Um, there's a set of table and chairs um, and a very high-tech home entertainment system and hundreds of CDs. And in this room are the twins. Yeah, so you also notice there are a pair of twins. They look, um, they're both beautiful. They look very similar to one another. One is uh, a male and one is female, but they both look kind of androgynous. Um, and they are currently lying next to each other on the couch uh, under a blanket watching television. And uh, as you guys come in, one of the, the male twin uh, looks over the couch and says, Is this the fish? Yes, this is uh, Jean Noir. I have shown him around the haven and uh, what he, where his room is. All right. So he points to himself. He says, I'm Alex. This is Sam. Um, and you know, Lesia, that Alex and Sam, the male twin is probably the easier way to know him because they switch personalities back mm -hmm. and forth. Once they switch personality, they switch names as well. Okay. So Alex generally goes with the male personality? Um, not necessarily. Alex goes with the more dominant personality. Um, oh. And Sam is the more submissive personality, but they will switch back and forth. Okay. So Alex is the dominant personality, Sam is the submissive personality, um, and they are necessary. But we can't tell looking at them which is male and female. Um, you can. So. They look very similar, but you can't tell one is male and one okay. is female. Okay. But they're not necess the male is not necessarily always Alex. No. Okay. All right. They switch according to a schedule that you have no idea. Oh, okay. Some okay. I I I have no need to judge or question. All right. Okay. Well, I've a question. Mhm. Mm uh, why am I the fish? So you're the new fish. What does the fish mean? Means you're our bitch. All right. And then he turns to Leslie and says, uh, "We're Tivo and curve your enthusiasm. You gonna watch it with us later?" Yes, that would be. All right. Fun. So he slides back under the blanket, and they ignore you. All right. So, Jean, you are free to entertain yourself. Um, I would encourage you not to explore too much in the Haven. As I said, there are several doors you should not be touching um, until you know your way around Betel. It's probably best to stick to the library or your room. <laughs> yeah. And with that, okay. and with that I'll leave. Right. As you're about to leave, uh, the door opens and a Japanese man uh, enters. Ah, Bishop Yamamoto. All right. So you see uh, Lesia, you know, basically give a bow. She says that. Well, I'd best uh, genuflex in his direction. All right. Bishop, let me introduce to you Jean Noir, our new pack member. All right. So he looks at you. 
and says, uh, then he turns back to Lesia and says, uh, start getting ready. Uh, you're going, we're all going to be leaving pretty soon. So make preparations. You wish me to get the twins? Uh, they will not be accompanying us. Oh, very well. And then turns uh, back to you, uh, Jean, and says, are you prepared to serve the pack? Absolutely. All right. While Lesia uh, prepares for us to depart, uh, I will explain a couple of very simple rules that you will be required to follow. Okay. Uh, I presume you have noticed the uh, sign-in and sign-out sheets for the weapons and the vehicles. Yes, Father. Uh, you will, of course, make use of those sheets. And if someone else has reserved a piece of equipment, you will leave it for them. Okay. All right says, furthermore, uh, in this pack, you were not permitted to leave the lair under any circumstances unless you have a pack member with you. Okay. Any uh, transgression on this account will be treated as being absent without leave and will be severely punished. Finally, uh, there is a garden. You may use it for your own meditation or growing whatever it is you like. However, if it is in use for meditation, you are not to disturb the person within. Okay. We will be uh, conducting all the usual rite. Uh, once we have a priest fully named for the pack, your attendance at these uh, rites is... Uh, not optional. Okay. All right. So, with that done, uh, you should grab anything you need. You will be working this evening. Working. Yes. Very well. Thank you very much. All right. So once uh, you and Lesia are ready, he will explain that you guys, uh, all of you, are going to the airport. Uh, another member of your pack is going to be arriving there, and you guys will be picking him up. Uh, and after that, you will be going on a mission. All right. All right. So, is there anything you guys want to do before you leave? So I know what he meant by prepare, right? Um, basically, he wanted you to get the car ready. Okay. Basically, sign it off. So I'll sign. Okay. So I. Okay. I just wanted to make sure I knew what yeah. he was doing. And anything else you want to grab? Do we need weapons? Do I have a? Uh, I have something that I take with me, right? Um, well, you have vicissitude, so... I have my dried bull's penis, uh, whip. That's what I have. <laughs> really, it's probably more effective for you to use vicissitude. You add your body crafts to damage rolls when you use that, and it's lethal damage, so... So, yes. Well, obviously, yes. But I do make sure I've got my whip. All right. Coil them up on my hip there. Okay. Just like Indiana Jones. All right. So, Jean, do you want to grab any other equipment? Jean. Jean. Eventually he'll get it. I'll just correct him until he does. Mm -hmm. Alright. We're gonna be like yeah, 52 um, weeks in. Well, I mean, I wasn't given any instructions as to how big this job is or whatever, so, uh... Was there any sidearms in that armory? Uh, yes, there were some that could be concealed on your person. Yeah, I'll get one of those. Alright. Be sure to sign it out. <laughs> I will follow the correct procedures. So if you grab the handgun, there is both normal ammo and silver ammo. Uh, am I able to take both? Uh, yeah, you can take some of both. I will take the normal ammo and just have one 
thing of uh, silver armor, then. Okay. So you guys uh, all pile up. Uh, well, you two actually just get into the Monte Carlo. Uh, the bishop will be taking his motorcycle. He's going to be meeting you at the airport. Um, I'm going to assume that I'm driving. Unless you know how to drive. Jean. Uh, I do know how to drive. How many points do you have? I've got two to drive. All right. Well, uh, Lysia is happy to let you take the wheel. Uh, just follow the bishop. Very well. All right. So he drives you out to the uh, international airport. It takes, you know, a few hours to get out there. A few hours? Just across town? Well, I guess it wouldn't be a few In, hours. At night? It would be about... Be probably about an hour well it's outside okay. of town well and that's fine i was just thinking a few hours. yeah you're right going? i was yeah so you guys head out and uh so hassan yep uh you have been basically catching red eye flights for a while now actually more than just a night because you've been going with the darkness Right. Um, yeah, you're going the opposite way of the darkness, so yeah, you'd have to probably hunker down somewhere yeah. for a day and then catch another. Yeah, so more. you've been just, like, going, falling down, going to sleep, and then getting up and then grabbing another plane. Um, your last stop, you were in Gary. You obviously <laughs> managed to feed. Right. Um, and you've just caught a plane, and you uh, land here in Montreal. And you're not really sure what to expect, but you do see, uh, after everyone else clears out, you see three people that look a little bit... That should not be together. There's, yeah. like, this Japanese samurai guy. <laughs> There's, like, this little sort of, uh, obviously Caribbean voodoo chick. And, uh, and then there's this just average-looking Joe. Just to be clear, <laughs> Yamamoto is wearing, uh, basically a, a silk suit. Oh, okay. Well, there's a very rich Japanese guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I assume I have my luggage with all the items I listed. Um, yeah. Let me just give a quick... It's just a knife and a scimitar. Alright, uh, yes. As well as the clothes, obviously. <laughs> yeah. Which I'm assuming is some sort of duffel bag that he had to check. It's checked luggage, oh. yeah. Yeah, I figured everyone's, as much. Everyone's cleared out by this point, so you've had plenty of time to get your luggage. Okay. Alright then. In case I will head over to the group and say... Good evening. I assume you are the ones I am meant to be meeting here. So the Japanese man speaks. He says, you are Hassan? Indeed. I am Hassan Esaba. Uh -huh. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, sir. So he says, I am uh, Bishop Yamamoto. Uh, let me find out what is... I keep forgetting how to pronounce it. It's Yamamoto Tsunetomo. And then he waits for you two to introduce yourselves. Oh, okay. Uh, I am Lizia. Je suis Chandra. <laughs> A pleasure. Real quick, when you say Yamamoto Sunetomo, are you doing uh, Western pronunciation or um, Japanese with last name first? Uh, I have no idea which one goes which way. I've seen it both yeah, ways, which Yam didn't help okay. me. Yamamoto, Yamamoto is a surname. All right, so I probably, I kind of figured, but I yeah. First. Okay. Tsunetomo Tomo is oddly long for a first name, but Yamamoto is definitely a surname. All right. Okay. Understood. All right. So, he says, "Are you prepared to join the Seven Samurai?" Of course, sir. All right. You will be working, going to work immediately. I see. That is so, not a problem. He gives, uh, Jean, you're driving, so he gives you a piece of paper with a location on it. He says, meet me here. And then he basically awesome. leaves you guys to get Hassan's bags into your car and okay. meet him there. So we'll head back out to the parking structure. Right then, I'll exactly. follow. Uh, son, do you... Leaving... Uh, yeah? I was gonna ask them, uh, do you know anything about this mission we are meant to be undertaking? 
Okay, obviously John says nothing. Absolutely uh, not. No, that is not the bishop's way. I see. Very intriguing. All right. So do you want to get anything out of your bag before you put it in the trunk, basically? Uh, maybe just my knife. I can conceal it quite easily, right? Yeah. Right. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll grab my knife then. All right. So you see this guy put his bag in the trunk and then pull this, like, <laughs> big-ass knife out, tuck it away. Seems reasonable. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Toriador is now going to fanboy. That is the, uh, <laughs> cool as shit. The well, mic. As, as a Toriador, as a Toriador, am I entranced by the knife? Not <laughs> yet. You'd be entranced by the Damascus steel of my scimitar, perhaps. Damascus steel, you say? I don't know if actually I'm just making it up. <laughs> it's not the, it's not the special... The check my bias. <laughs> I was going to say, um, I think, Miles, what we're going to do, uh, and Stalworth as well, is we're just going to, like, just bullshit the Toreador as much as we possibly can. <laughs> Let's just Absolutely. Sure. Yeah, okay. I'm okay with right, that. Good. Yeah, okay, good. It doesn't have the Whoa. magical <laughs> item properties of, like, the Damascus steel from the Dark Ages, but, I mean, it is... Like real life Damascus so, yeah, steel, if you I want say, it to be I say, made Miles, with the special you just, go, you just go on with the whole. Yeah, this is Damascus steel. It's it's magical. You blah, actually, Lysia will know you're full of shit, but the Toreador is gonna buy it. You actually can <laughs> tell Damascus steel uh, from regular ones by like the lines on it and stuff. So but there the is. That's quite not obvious. Gonna know that. <laughs> I mean, the rest of us are, but the Toreador, no. He's gonna be. Well, like, apparently, oh, it actually is Damascus steel. This new yeah. age Damascus steel. So yeah. it's fine. So in the steel Dark Ages, made from Damascus. yeah, it is steel made from Damascus. There was a special method in the Dark Ages because Westerners didn't understand that, like Muslim people, just had technology. Uh, they thought it was magic of some kind. Um, <laughs> it's not. It's just a process that they use for making steel. All right, nice. I found a Wikipedia article for a Yamamoto Tsune Tomo, by the way. <laughs> nice. Do you have a picture? He's like a 16th like century fucker. Okay, well, maybe that's this guy. Oh no. Could very well be. He is a Sabat bishop. I actually kind of figured David would know him immediately, but... <laughs> Apparently he had to Wikipedia. Yeah. I'm not big on the older history. Hmm. He's one of the seven samurai, isn't he? Uh, no. No? Okay. Actually, uh, Jean, what is your character's intelligence plus academics? Is that for me? Yes. Bijan, he actually said it correctly, too. Sorry, I just, I think I heard John, which obviously used to be Miles. Sorry. Uh, what was it again? <laughs> Uh, intelligence plus academics. Us is five. Okay. Yeah, you would actually be basically familiar uh, with the guy. Like uh, now that you're kind of have a chance to think about it a little bit, so pretty much anything you read on the Wikipedia page would come to mind for you. Okay. As to who he is, you've heard of the uh, the book he wrote. All right. Cool got a newfound respect for our bishop. Mm. Well, yeah, because, uh, like I asked, I was wondering how old he is. Yeah, so, it po it's possible it's the same guy. You don't know for sure. Alright. <laughs> Alright, all right. so let's all pile into the uh, Chevy Montero here. Monte and, Carlo. Uh, Monte Carlo, and... Uh, Good. We're driving a Monte Carlo. That's brilliant. Let's all <laughs> pile into the Monte Carlo and head on over to where the bishop told us to go. All right. So you guys, the address you reach is uh, La Ronde, which is an abandoned amusement park. So once you arrive, uh, the Gary has kind of gave it off. But you can see there are people inside. It looks like someone set up like kind of a circus on the grounds. Um, and Yamamoto is waiting by the gate for you. Kind of by, like, a shack sort of thing on the periphery, which is used for storing you don't know what. 
But as soon as you arrive, he points out the circus. He says, this is uh, Zanatovich's circus. He is a Zamitsi from the old world. Do I know him? Um, you probably have heard of him, but you don't know him. Okay. Not all Zamitsi know each other. <laughs> well, I, I meant know him in the sense of, do I recognize his name? Uh, yes. I meant a Konoser, not a Saber. Mm, okay? I see. So, um, he says, I will now explain your mission to you. If you accomplish it, then all of you will be, uh, accepted as true Sabbat. If you fail, well, I guess it won't really matter what your rank is. So. Okay. A member... <laughs> <laughs> The Toreador, yes. I like. I really like Jean the, the Everyman. Us. Yeah. It's like, oh, wait. I don't know what the... Well, so Lizia and Hassan got, are just like, yes. I mean, John, John's like a computer savvy businessman. Like, you know, Lizia and Hassan are like, oh, yes, that is just. <laughs> yeah, you've got a guy who's been trained for years as an assassin, voodoo priestess who knows all about the supernatural already. And, and then like, this guy. What? What? what do I have to do? <laughs> Does that imply we're dead? Is that what that implies? <laughs> San just looks over. Failure is punishable. <laughs> I literally have a curse that punishes me every time I fail anything, so... Oh, Lizzie uh, is gonna like you. Alright. Alright. So, a member of the circus uh, has been found, uh, has been discovered to be conspiring with the Camarilla. And even worse, uh, with a member of Clan Tremere. Does that mean anything to me? Uh, you are not really that familiar with the Tremere, but from the way... I despise them, but yet respect them. For the first time, you I see... I just despise them. Yeah, actually, for well... the first time, you see these two guys' facial expressions change as both of them clearly know. Mm hmm the Tremere. Disgust. You see well, disgust upon our faces. Well, I picked up on the fact that Tremere being in our group means we have magic books. So you had them. Cool. Yeah. He's gone now. But He's we still have now, his books, because yeah. I pointed him out in yeah. the thing. I said we we're lucky to have these. So. Uh, basically what happens is there was a pack called the uh, the Polite Helpful Young Men. And he led them into a trap of some kind. We don't know, you know, exactly what happened, um, but your job is to find out where he is, find out what happened, um, and then bring him to justice. If you can do this successfully, you will be accepted as true Sabbat. There was only a single survivor of the pack. And... A second here. So he points to the shack that you are nearby. He says, inside there is a Lasombra named uh, Saint Castian. Uh, they found him basically retreating from the uh, area. From but the, basically, this guy has a bad reputation. He has been he is a known coward. Yamamoto informs you. <clears throat> and has been disciplined on a number of occasions, we presume the reason he survived is because he, you know, ran when his pack was in trouble. I see. So he's been around for several years and no more. You're going to interrogate him, find out everything he knows that can be of use to you, and then finally finish this guy. He's been a blight on the Sabbat for decades. And you're going to end it. Understood. So, says, that's it. You have only yourselves to depend on until this mission is accomplished. You may use uh, the lair to sleep in during the day, but other than that, uh, you're on your own. Is there a time limit? Uh, there is not. However, if we receive word that he has escaped from the city, that will constitute failure on your part. Understood. All right. 
So he gets back on his motorcycle and he drives off. Now, how should we start this mission? Any suggestions? Well, I suppose try to find information on this guy? Right. We know he's a coward. What more do we need to know? <laughs> well, supposedly, he might have some trick, supposedly, if well, the, this long. well, that's the other guy. That's not the guy that you found running from the pack. This is the guy that is supposedly inside the shack. Is the coward? The yes, coward he's inside. the coward. The traitor is someone else. Right. Yeah. That's what, okay, so that I assumed we were going to go talk to him, and I yeah. assumed that who that is who Miles was speaking of. Yeah. But were you speaking of the traitor instead? I was speaking of finding out about the coward, since we're going there to interrogate him and kill him, aren't we? Right, because I, I thought we had to interrogate the coward in order to get a clue as to who the traitor was. Well, it's not as well. <laughs> That was my understanding, but... Let's do that. Okay, so I guess the first step is to get straight what the fucking objective is. <laughs> yes! Okay. Let's get information from from the coward about the traitor. That is... Um, and then right. kill him. And then, and, then, him. and then we kill the coward. Yes, that was my understanding yeah. of what our mission was. And oh. then kill the traitor. And then kill the traitor as well. Hopefully, yeah. Clean sweep. Yes. No witnesses. Exactly. Not even ourselves. So, so out of game, <laughs> I feel like in game Hassan and Lizia should know exactly. I mean, maybe Jean asked these <laughs> questions, but like Hassan and Lizia, we know immediately what we're nah, supposed nah, to do. Your character is reliable to your player's mistakes, all right? If you guys look like idiots, your characters look like idiots. That's why we needed to, to clarify this. Okay, so. Um, as soon as everyone important is out of the room, all the names are like, oh shit, what are we doing? Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing? What I was so that? terrified, I wasn't even listening. <laughs> yeah, I wasn't listening. <laughs> oh my god. Do we have a job? <laughs> They're like, oh, these quests, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, what are we supposed to do? Okay. John, help us. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, so wait. We interrogate the coward <laughs> to, to find get the traitor the clue. but we kill them both we kill them both yes we're killing them both yeah okay so so in we go all right in so you find a staked form of a man just laid out there Lizia will stand oh. just outside the well, was I'm assuming the shed is not that large. Yeah, the, the coward isn't really part of your test. He was already captured. You're just interrogating him and then finishing him off. Is there some rope or anything nearby we can use to tie him up with? Uh, yeah, you can secure him. Very well, I will do uh, as good a job as do I can securing him. Do you guys know him. about the Savat? Or, I mean, the Lazombra? We know about that. We know that Yamamoto just told us, well, I guess, whatever his first name is. Well, Bishop Yamamoto, that's how I would refer to him. Bishop yeah, Yamamoto yeah, yeah. Yes, told us he is the cow he is a coward and he was part of a pack and the only reason he survived is because he ran away. His name and is also... Saint Castin. Saint He also told Saint us Castin. Saint Castin is a La Sombra. Do mm -hmm. you guys know what that means? I am somewhat familiar with their clan. Yes. Hey, well what yes. can they do? Do they have some control over shadows? We should, this probably move him. Level. we yes. should probably move him into a well-lit area. You can do that. Alright, alright. Now we're putting our thinking caps on. I like it. Hmm. I assume he has been somewhat drained of blood. You could drain him further if you idea. wanted to. Might be a good idea to check how drained he is, eh? Yeah, I'll cut open his arm and see if there's any um, significant vitae in there. All right, Stalworth, what's your blood level currently? What? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is seven. All right, he's got about seven blood points in him. Okay, I will squeeze him down to three. All right, are you guys okay. control, are you guys this? drinking the blood, or are you just? I'm not. I'm not drinking it. I will try to keep my uh, desires in check. Is anyone else? No, I do not wish to drink. Uh. Well, I mean... I'm it is the blood of a coward. It's true. Since I'm full, I don't need to. That's right. Likewise. Uh, well, there is a risk of getting addicted, so I'll say no. Um, that's mostly for Asimites that get addicted. We do the Valdry. Yeah, you guys are going to be doing the Valdry. 
Yeah, but like, can't, yeah, but every time you drink Vampire Vitae, don't you have to roll to see if I can? That's it to the uh, no, that's actually uh, Asamites need every time. If you diabolize people, you can start to get addicted. But just taking a, a nip from him won't do anything. Oh, I mean, look, you know, in the you will be popular well, blood bond to him. Don't let money moment. go to waste. <laughs> <laughs> the Valdry will perform a Valdry, it's fine. Yeah. I know, I know. Right. I'm, a, I'm already- oh, I'm already in a Valdry, so, like, it's fine. Yeah. Will you partake or not? Yeah, yeah, gimme, give gimme. Give Alright, so- Go ahead. Alright, well, Stalworth is currently- his character is staked, so you can take as much blood from him as you want. Alright, drink four points. Alright, Stalworth, you lose four blood points. I'm up full, lad. Awesome. <laughs> Alright. In that case, I'll be prepared to unstake him. Do you want to vicissitude him first? I was going to say, do you want me to vicissitude him in some way first? If you could perhaps connect his arms behind his back. I will happily connect both his arms and his legs. All right. All Wonderful. Right. Yeah. All right. So he's in no position to resist, so you're able to okay. do it easily. And you guys pull the stairs. John's in shock at what he's just. <laughs> yeah, you see this lady basically take his limbs and then just fuse them into a single fleshy <laughs> he's area. Just, he's just a phallic symbol at this point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a cowardly phallic symbol. A, phallic, a cowardly phallic symbol. A limb phallic An symbol. An impotent phallic symbol <laughs> is what he is. Very well then. Let us begin, and I will remove the stake. All right. So, uh, so were you awakened to find that your limbs are fused yeah, to your body. Joseph, you uh, suddenly come into consciousness. All the events that basically I sent you in that message have occurred. And this is you waking up for the first time after that. Um, you feel, you notice that you feel hungry immediately. Um, and you also notice that you seem to have like your hands tied behind your back. And then your feet seem to be tied together, too. And then when you're looking, you can see that your feet have been fused together into just, like, a single limb. <laughs> and there are three people standing over you. Good evening. I scream hysterically. I will activate my first power of quietus. All right. So you start screaming, and then all of a sudden, all sound blacks out. So you're still screaming, but you can't hear anything. It's perfectly so as soon quiet. As he stops, like physically just, acting yeah. out. And we'll just stand there calmly and stare. At you. <laughs> I don't know what John's doing, but Lizia and his son are just like staring at you and with absolute John calm. Is looking left and so like John is uh, standing between you guys, right? And he's looking left and right. He's like. Which one of you did that? <laughs> <laughs> not reacting, Elysia, not reacting. And obviously, he tries to say that and nothing comes out. <laughs> <laughs> so, has he, has he calmed down somewhat yet? I assume eventually, yes. Okay, so Probably. I will remove the power. And I will say once again, good evening. Who are you, monsters? We will be asking the questions for now. Introduce yourself. Who are you? What have you done to my legs and my arms? <laughs> I will take out my knife and place it near his face. Introduce yourself, kind sir. I'm Joseph. Full name. Doesn't have Joseph Benessi. I see. Now... Do you know anything about a group named the Polite Young Men? Yes. They were my first pack, but they were slain by in an ambush. When and where? When and where? <laughs> <laughs> Let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got to read through his his thing. So there's right? no specific location between uh, the cities that's mentioned, but you would know the general location. 
Okay, I told the, the general location and time. It's basically a rest area on the freeway. Very well. Now, why were you the only one to survive? Because I was recently uh, embraced. They didn't trust me to actually fight with them, so I was guarding the escape route. After I saw that it was an ambush, I fled so that I wouldn't also be destroyed. I see. You are indeed a coward to have fled from your comrades to save your own life. I regret nothing. <laughs> <laughs> we will make you regret it. Why not? <laughs> Now, do any of you have any further questions for him? Out of character, I'm asking. So, who betrayed you? Out of character, do I know who betrayed us? Um, yeah, it says in there, it's the the guy who told you about the location was a member of the circus named Midget. Uh, there was a dwarf uh, named Midget. Um... It was, it's most likely him. He's the one who informed us about the about the location of the uh, other tribe pack. I see. Tell me everything you know about this midget person. Well, <laughs> he told us. Has to read. <laughs> he was really short. <laughs> yes, he, he's short. He uh he told us about the other uh the other uh coterie of neo neonates from the Camarilla. Uh, he said they were traveling to uh Ottawa from uh Quebec City. Um We thought that um we were actually gonna be ambushing them, but they ended up sending out a pack of ghouls to trick us. And uh in the process, when we attacked the ghouls, we ended up getting ambushed by the actual uh, vampires. I see. Do you know this midget's current whereabouts? Uh, at this time, I, I do not. Been staked for a while, you know. <laughs> <laughs> do you know where he tends to be? His former whereabouts, then? Um, I believe I can tell you where we where we first met him, but I don't know if he'll still be there. I see. It could prove useful to examine the area, if nothing else. So, where is it? I tell him where it is. All right. So he starts describing a abandoned amusement park uh, where a circus has been set up. So pretty much here. I think we're good. I think <laughs> he can't good. actually see it because he's in the shack right, right he's now. He has no idea where he is. Yeah. We're, but he is describing okay. a few feet outside the door. It's here. Okay. I see. Again. No. Well, quite lucky for you. That is our current location. Let's let's kill this guy. <laughs> yes, well first there are You are things. surprisingly eager. Yes. We will examine the area. You wait here for further questions. Well, I don't really have a choice, but okay. <laughs> it was not a request, but an order. I was gonna say put the stake back in him. Yeah. Bunk. Alright, yep, yeah, you're staked <laughs> again. The hole is still there, so you just go back out. <laughs> Well, damn. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking it remarkably well. <laughs> well, he is staked, so, you know, I mean, how much can you react? You're just like, yeah. All right. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, as, as he sees the stake, I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Let us examine the area, then. All right, so apparently we are looking for a dwarf Midget. named Midget. Okay. Uninventive, but nonetheless. Why not a midget named Dwarf? I don't know. Ha! Jean, you are witty tonight. <laughs> Relax, yeah? 
So as you're kind of looking around the area, uh, Zanatovich uh, comes up to you. And uh, as you, it's kind of as you're coming out of the shaft. So he says, is that uh, St. Castian inside? Yes. Though he referred to himself as Joseph. Hmm. Well, we don't really... He did have a ID card. He basically pulls out just while and hands it over to you. His ID does say the same thing, but um, physically he matches the exact description of uh, St. Castian. So it's was probably him. Into, was this group big into code names? Yet we know that physical appearances may be deceiving. That's true. So, um, anyway, I don't know. It, it's probably him. He is a known liar, too, and he does create... St. Castian obviously is a coward. He creates a lot of alternate identities. So... Things like that. So I wouldn't worry too much about it. Probably just kill him once you're finished for with a moment, him. One moment, please. Well, that... Do any of you have a phone that can take pictures? Uh, yeah. May I borrow it for a moment? Yeah. Right. Santo hands over his phone. Right then. I'll go and take a picture of him as he's like, just his face. Mm-hmm. I'll remove the stake and I'll show him the picture. Do you recognize this person? All right, so <laughs> Salma, do you come back out and he's showing you a picture of yourself? Um, slightly altered, you know, as per what it says oh, in your little write-up. Uh, yes, that that is my, uh, that's my sire, St. Caston. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, I'll stake him again. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, one moment. All right. So while he's in there, do you guys have anything you want to ask Sanatovich? Yeah, I'll tell him that uh, apparently St. Castian is his sire and he's been altered to look like him. Hmm. Or it's St. Castian and he's playing some kind of game, pretending not to be him. That is also an option. Well, I mean, it's up to you how you want to deal with it. Hmm. So, being Zamitsi and knowing vicissitude, can I tell when someone has been vicissitude? Not really, not if they're good at it. Okay. I mean, if it's, if it's an obvious change, then yes. But if it's, uh... Like, it's not like... If it's just a it's regular It's not like features. a cult where you can tell like no. some magic is going on. No. Okay. So never mind then. I say nothing. If you add like a full examination of his body, you might look for some telltale signs like something's out of place that wouldn't be there for a regular body, maybe, but you would have to basically strip him naked and do like an hour's that long could search. Be done. Well, we I mean, do that, that could be done. I have no reason to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Every time that can happen, <laughs> we can strip him naked and violate him in many ways. If anything, you should probably take him back to your laboratory to yeah, do that. Yeah, well, we will. Well, obviously, we're not going to necessarily well, kill him right off now because there's some question. Yeah. Though he is a coward. We have established that. Yeah, you did reestablish that in addition. <laughs> he well, yes. sound pretty cowardly. Yeah. Maybe it runs in his side. But um, maybe that was his first... I mean, we do have to get... You know, yeah. if he's young... You know, he, he may not have really known yeah. what was going on. It may be more of a beating offense than a killing offense. Exactly. I mean, there may be other ways. This may be a first offense rather than a an, an established pattern. Is what I'm saying. We may be able to, we may be able to beat it out of him. Yeah. Very well. For now, let us examine the areas and look for clues. Let us look for... Right. I, I believe we should... Uh, we so can also I'm ask going, Zinovich I'm about gonna it. I'm going to ask Zinovich uh, yeah. if he has a dwarf named Midget. Yeah, so he'll explain... Uh, yes, he was a member of the circus. He joined up a while ago, and he says, I was actually the one who discovered um, that he was with the uh, Camarilla. I will raise my eyebrows at this. Uh, so another pack member was in the process of uh, playing some sort of prank on him um, when he discovered a certain item within his, uh, his belongings. And Zanatovich uh, pulls out a little amulet necklace, and he will hand it over to you. And what is it? Um, so, give me a, um... 
Well, you're probably going to need to study it in order to figure out what it is. But okay. you can see it instantly. It does have hermetic sigils on it. Okay, I will take that immediately. Um, obviously, we were a little bit suspicious since the Tremere and Teacher Bue have become much more rare recently as to how he got a something with hermetic sigils on it. Uh, after some examination with Auspex, it was revealed that it was a gift from someone who is not a resident of Montreal. Further investigation confirmed that it was a member of the Quebec Tremere. So, he has since vanished. Um, he's not been seen around the lair. Unfortunately, we did have to tip our hand. We realized that he had just made contact with a pack, and we tried to get the word out that he was a traitor as quickly as possible, rather than trying to capture him, because we hoped to save the pack. Unfortunately, we were just slightly too late. Um, however, he probably knows that the Sabbat is after him at this point. So very unfortunate. Do you know of any um, previous uh, hangouts that he had? Uh, unfortunately, I do not. Although he was a resident uh, of the city before he, I mean, he has a, a residence here in the here city. Is there anyone here who was his friend? Uh, aside from this pack, he w was not particularly outgoing with anyone. Where from here? Well, since he doesn't know any previous hangouts, I don't know where from here. Well, For now, let us examine this person's body. Well, I mean, the guy, I mean, the guy who may or may not be the saint, he obviously knows where their old haven was and stuff. Yeah, that's probably good. So let's go back and we will thank, um, Whatever his name is for Zanatovich, uh, Zanatovich for his help. Uh, uh, can we see the midget's quarters? Uh, yes. Um, he's already had them searched, but he brings you in there. Um, he's also searched the area with Auspex. Um, but you can research it if you want to. He didn't find anything. So does anybody have investigation or anything? It's a perception plus investigation roll to try and... Yeah, I got seven with a specialty. All right. John can prove his worth right here. Yeah, you look over, and it looks like this area has been gone through pretty cleanly. You do find a couple of, like, secret compartments, um, but they were already found. They've already been emptied out by Xanatovich. Or not. That's... <laughs> John does not prove his <laughs> worthiness. Um, Xanatovich did seem like he searched this place very thoroughly. Okay. Um, and he says that the only thing he found that was kind of suspicious was the, the necklace. Yeah, that I and um, there was some other stuff that kind of indicates, you know, meetings with the Tremere, but... But nothing that was yeah, where his just kind of like have gone or where he previously Yeah, had. just like some... There was some code stuff for, like, sending messages, but there's nothing there that was actually in code. It was just, like, code books. All right, then I suggest we go back to uh, St. Castle. The laboratory. Well, no, let's, uh, let's talk to Joseph again and see where his old haven was and uh, anything related Very to well. him. Maybe go to the rest area. You can do that. Where they yep. uh, have the problem. Anyway, so go ahead. Then let us unstake him again. All right. So. so you're unstaked again. <laughs> can, can we not do that anymore? <laughs> Unfortunately, we have little choice. He says, laughing and smiling. <laughs> I am taking some enjoyment out of this, I won't deny. <laughs> well, ask your questions, miss. Oh, Mary just left. Oh. <laughs> She's the one with the questions. Yeah, I know. So, uh, we're gonna need you to help us find your old haven. We need to track down this uh, sire of yours. Oh, so y'all need my help now. 
No, no, you're gonna stake tell him us again. where things are, and then we're gonna stake you again and bring you with us. Uh oh. <laughs> yeah, don't get too big for your britches. Like, you're literally, like, your hands are literally tied together. We are not requesting your help. We are demanding it. Alright. Well, seeing as I have no choice. <laughs> you will, of course, be summarily rewarded if you aid us sufficiently. Yeah. Oh, so I won't get killed? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you can prove you're not the guy, the sire, then technically our orders won't be to kill you anymore. Well, I mean, I, of course I'm not my sire. You see, yeah, proving you that see, may prove rather troublesome. But don't worry, we have our ways to know if you're telling the truth or not. Well, actually, I mean, uh, out of character. Mm -hmm. Is Auspex Tree good enough to tell lies? I can't tell. Um, yeah, you can look in his aura to see if he's lying, but then again, you can... If it's not there, you can't tell if you actually didn't see it or if you just missed it. Well, it won't well, hurt to try it. But yeah, say, it what's whirl. your perception plus empathy? Seven. Specialty. <clears throat> It seems like he believes what he's saying, although you have been told that this guy is an extremely good liar. All right, mm -hmm. but let me put him under some stress. Mm-hmm. So wherever his... So I pick a nerve center. Mm-hmm. And I give him the most amount of pain I can possibly give him. Oh. <laughs> you, Toreador, look at his aura. Is he still not lying? Uh, that might obfuscate the results a bit, but... Uh... <laughs> Alright. So, okay, yeah. So, uh, so, my friend, listen, your instructions are clear. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to feel some pain, and if you lie again, you will feel more of the pain. So make sure you tell the truth the first time, okay? Uh, okay. Alright. All right. Ad administer the pain. <laughs> so, Lesia grabs a hold of you, and you feel the most intense agony you have ex ever experienced, like, in your life. This is like getting hit quietus, in the nuts quietus. like a thousand times. Quietus, <laughs> quietus. In the area. I realize immediately, yeah, that you should probably to be quiet this year. Uh, so, and obviously, Jean, you're asking if he's really a sire or not. So I'll let him finish. All right. Catch his breath or whatever, and then I'll be like, okay. Uh, what was the saint, saint guy's name? Saint what? Saint Castian. Okay, are you Saint Castian? No, you sick bastards. <laughs> <laughs> are you Jonathan? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, I've All right. got two tests there. What are the results? It yeah. seems like he is telling the truth. Alright, well, guys, I mean... He, he thinks he's telling the truth anyway. Do you I'm have... The, wait, do you have the low self-image flaw? I do. You think he's telling the truth, but you just can't be certain that you're right. Because you could be <laughs> screwing it up. You really... You don't want... It's important that no one exclusively goes on your opinion. I see. Alright, well, guys, the only thing I know is it's not a false positive. <laughs> I see. All right. But possibly a further examination later mm. may reveal more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, we will go with it for now. But yes, we do reserve the right um, to examine further. Now then, let us go investigate this battleground, shall we say. All right. We should stake him again. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Thunk. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, I missed. Sonk. Sonk. <laughs> There's a big hole there. <laughs> it just slides right in. And now, and now there's another one. <laughs> <laughs> there's two or three. He purposefully is missing. Alright. <laughs> I'm not actually <laughs> talking, just making sure. I mean, wouldn't that be causing further levels of health damage to him? Yeah, it would. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, what's okay. the problem here? He's in torpor. Uh, he's incapacitated. Who cares? <laughs> Poor Stalwart. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, there's a score on Stalwart's sheet going down when you do that. <laughs> yeah. It only takes a luck point to wake him up. Yeah. You know, it's fine. So you toss him in the back yeah, seat. 
Uh, um, in the trunk. The trunk. Yeah. Uh, in yeah. the trunk. Heavily bound and, and vicissituted. Okay. It would normally be like Miles in this situation, wouldn't it? It would yeah. be, but Miles, 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 Miles is so happy that he's not the Jonathan of this game. <laughs> he gets to inflict the suffering. Yes! He's the Ryan in this game. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Hold on. I mean, kind of are. All right, so we In the throw... sense that I'm the first clue guy, I guess I am. In the sense that you're the quiet murderer. Joseph is now in our trunk, and we are going to investigate... The nice. scene of the crime. So the pack's all together. Yeah, yeah pretty much. <laughs> okay, so back. Pretty much. We missed you, Stallworth. <laughs> <laughs> Unwilling we all together, but yeah. <laughs> oh, you're gonna love us. So who is taking the uh, the amulet? Who has it on them? I have it on me. Okay. So you head out to the uh, rest area. Um, and it is basically like a freeway, you know, rest area. Um, there are only a few cars here because you're in the middle of the night. Um, and there is, like, an area where it looks like maybe some kind of storm went through. There's, like, some damage to the buildings on one side. Okay. Can I see if disciplines or magic was used here? Um, yeah, you can give me a perception plus a cult to see if magic was used here. Alright, so that's seven. Okay. Uh, you don't find any traces of magic. Does it seem natural, though? Uh, no. It, you're pretty sure it was some so kind of some fight. some sort of discipline came through. Okay. <clears throat> because Tremere... We investigate the area normally? Thaumaturgy yeah. would not Give me a magic. perception plus investigation. For me, that would be... Five. Okay. John should probably take a look around as well. You've also got the ability to investigate with Auspex as well. Yep. Yeah, you don't find anything of particular note, although you do notice some ash scattered around that was probably at one point... A vampire. Uh, or multiple vampires. Oh, multiple vampires. Since he was telling us about the lying of the... Uh, Supposed Saint Castian, and whether or the truth telling of the supposed, I will look at Jean expectantly because I've now figured you've got Auspex. Oh, uh, what, what, what do you want me to do? Uh, investigate this area, absolutely. I will do so. All right, perception plus empathy, seven specialty. Okay. So you start uh, feeling around the area, and you do feel, uh, you can kind of sense the auras. There was a fight that definitely happened here. Um, there's just a lot of the emotions you would uh, assume with a fight. Um, and then there's something weird about the auras of the attackers. They're not vampiric, exactly, but they are dark. They're like very blackish sort of auras. Um, not just pale like vampires usually are. I will report this. Would I know what a dork aura... Yeah, you're not exactly sure what it could mean. You can't see them yourself, so... But something not necessarily vampiric. Not necessarily. Hmm. And you'd be familiar with... I mean, you would have heard about kind of the auras. They usually are accompanied with, like, werewolves and things, and this doesn't match this them doesn't either. This doesn't sound like any sort of aura that I'm aware of. No. Uh, fairy, ghost, anything yeah, like that? Yeah, nothing like that you've heard of. Hmm. But dark makes me think uh, demonic. That is one interpretation, yeah. Okay. So it's possible that St. Caspian was also involved in some sort of infernalism. Mm-hmm. I will throw that out to the group. So, hmm. why was Joseph with this pack if it's his sire that's supposed to be there? We need to clarify that from... So let's go open the trunk. Let's take the guy. All right. Ask again, why exactly was he with the pack? Was his sire there with the pack? There are some people around this area, so you may want to, may go to go somewhere. We may go somewhere else, but these are the questions that I, I would like to clarify. Why is, was Joseph with him? 
was his sire also with them at that time? Did his sire tell him to go instead of himself? How did well, he have uh, to look like I, his sire? These I are the questions I want to know. Talk. What was that, David? Yeah, well, my sire's talk. It could have been something like that. Yeah. Well, I think we need to ask Joseph these questions, is what I'm saying. So do you want to go back to the pack lair? And... So, yeah, let's let's head back. Yeah, you know, at the pack lair, I believe I will have more implements um, that are at my disposal to, All right. um, to get at the truth. Okay. Is what I believe here. And you are, at this point, only, because you've been running around for a while, it is only a few hours until... Dawn. So if you wanted to do your interrogation, study the amulet, that could be the rest of the yeah, night, pretty I, much. I, I would say that. That's what I would counsel. Is anyone else okay with that? Works for me. Alright. Yeah. Star Wars doesn't get a vote yeah. on account of uh, being staked. I just, I just got back. <laughs> <laughs> You're staked in the trunk you, still? You are still staked, yeah. Oh, okay. Alright, so you head back to the lair and you're able to drag the body and they ignore yeah so, the homeless people ignore you so Stalworth, you're being dragged into our uh communal haven and uh we're uh, we're making plans well i'm going to study the amulet and make plans to torture so you to get more information. do you put him in the cells or do you put him in your laboratory The cells, I think, have the torture equipment. Or in them. do we want to put him in the rumpus room? <laughs> because... No, he would like that. Oh, would you like that? Okay. Yeah. Uh, which has more torture equipment? The cells have the torture equipment. Uh, the right, lab well, is more geared towards actual well, we, magical we research. We should obviously put him in the cells then. Okay. So you wake up again in what seems to be some sort of medieval torture chamber. Um, the three people are still there. <laughs> oh, actually, I forgot. As you're dragging him in, uh, Yamamoto actually came up to you and uh, asked why he's... Why? Um, he claims he is not Saint uh, Castillon, uh, that he is actually Saint Castillon's child, Joseph Vanessi. We are attempting to get further information. All right. Well, if he is not, then Saint Castillon is not part of your mission anymore. Um, but you should definitely find out the truth um, and then deal with him appropriately. Understood. All right. All right, so yes, uh, Joseph, you wake up in this medieval torture chamber with the three people uh, still there. Well, maybe, could I have a word with the guys before, just before we wake them up? Okay. Very well. So, uh, hear Speak. me out. So, mon ami, you know, listen, let's, let's say this guy is, is, you know, Joseph, and he's not the sire, right? Then, like, we might want him to keep cooperating with us after we've proven his innocence. But maybe he might not be so inclined to do that if we torture him too much. It works like, is me. there any way you can inspect his body without causing... I will look at him incredulously. Pain? And say he is Sabat. If he is true Sabat, he will not mind a little torture. Well, well, I mean, it like it's a matter of wonders, perspective, right? Dream, right? <laughs> Listen, think, think of it this way, guys, guys. Think of it this way. This isn't a, this isn't me being squirmish. This is a tactical decision to gain this guy's trust and not fuck it up by torturing him too much. All right. Think of it if that way. If he is true Sabat, way, like. would he not look upon us as weak if we did not torture him? I completely agree. That's a good point. Well, clearly this guy isn't true Sabat. I mean, he's he is kind of a pussy, let's be honest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> then what point so, would there be adding him to our group? Well, I'm not saying adding him to our group, but, you know, just... <laughs> yes, Hassan. Just... <laughs> <laughs> it is Steven and Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure... I'm sure such intelligent guys as yourselves can come to the conclusion that it is wiser to keep him not so resentful of us. Pain cleanses. It is uh, an excellent teacher. And strengthens. Okay, so All you right. guys have <laughs> give me... resentment to us. <laughs> Get, do either of you have, uh, both of you give me wits plus uh, politics. Uh, free. Four. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, obviously, you don't know what this bitch is talking about, but 
if St. Castian is basically a problem, it is possible that you could maybe get some prestige for yourselves if you find him and kill him. If he's... If this guy looks like St. Castian, it's possible he has some sort of connection with him. Like, maybe he could be used as bait to, like, lure him out, like a dupe. Okay. okay. And, you know, maybe if you can use this guy as bait... So he doesn't necessarily may need come to join us, but we could use him yes. as bait. Yes. And maybe if you pretend to be on his side... I see. I see. So, so... So wait a minute. So I will explain this to Hassan and say, you know, uh, he may not be true Sabat. Pain may not be the way to go. Maybe we should listen to young Jean here. Um, An also, odd suggestion, is, but I'm willing to give it a try. Who is also obviously not true Sabat. <laughs> um, <laughs> kind of the same thought. You both made the role, so both yeah. of you kind of the same thought kind of crosses we'll your mind. Of, we'll, we'll 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 share a look, Miles. You and I, we share a look. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and we're like, okay, Jean, we understand your point. Race. <laughs> <All right>, I. <laughs> Now, all right, so the stake gets pulled out, Stalworth. Finally. <laughs> hey, buddy, come on. Shell's like, I'm on your side. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like, you, why, why are you trying to annoy the likes of us? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I apologize. Thank you for not These killing guys me. are more than ready to kill you. <laughs> This is like good cop, bad cop. If the good cop was really worried about the person. Like, actually realized like he's sweating. that is a bad cop. That is a really bad cop. Like, he's sweating and terrified. Like, man, they're gonna kill you. Dude, this is real. We're not playing. <laughs> Alright. So do you want to examine him to see? Yeah, why don't you give him a little examination with Auspex? Uh, sure. Uh, if I try to do the past seeing thing, <laughs> mm -hmm. do I get any hint, any hints as to him being tampered with by that fleshy stuff that my partner here was doing earlier? Um, not really. That would be more like Mary would have to make that role. It would be intelligence plus medicine. Probably. Well, so well, perception plus way. medicine, uh, which I have. From, from what experience, I, I so from what experience I just saw, I have a hunch. Mm -hmm. But I look for any signs of him being in excruciating pain before <laughs> what we were doing to him. Now, your excruciating pain basically wiped out a lot of the memories of the old excruciating pain. Alright, okay. uh, I will do a was, perception with medicine check. Uh, okay. What is it? Six. Okay. I'll see if he's been altered. Um, you don't find any traces of alteration okay. on him. Okay, no alterations. This is making me think he's a liar. I will inform the group there have been no alterations upon this man. So what I want to know from him is how he came to be with the polite young men. If he is not Saint Castellan. Hmm. If I need well. to inflict pain, <laughs> I will. I apologize. <laughs> 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 when he's thinking, I like to just imagine his character laying on the ground, just staring like wide-eyed at <laughs> the ceiling. <laughs> my God, how did I get here? Hi, my name's Joseph. You might be <laughs> here. Right um. Well, I'm not 100 percent sure how my when when my when I was embraced. Um. My pack priest uh, altered my uh, appearance at the request of my sire, Saint Castin. So, 
So you saw no signs of major alterations. So either the pack priest was really good, or he has not had the kind of surgery that he's claiming. Mm -hmm. That it so sounds there like no, he like, has had. no bone structure. Maybe it have just been a flesh. If that is possible. That may have been it. But that would have just been very minor alterations, probably. Did you formerly look similar to your sire? Uh, yes, we we did formerly look very similar. I will I will that's I will the reason that you embrace toward me. Hassan. I, I I completely ignore Jean. I will shrug <laughs> toward Hassan that that is possible. In my opinion, if it were minor alterations, I may not have picked up on it. I see. <clears throat> How very unfortunate for him that there is no way to prove his innocence. <laughs> so why? So you were with the the young polite men, polite young men, uh, through your sire. Why was your sire with the pack when they were attacked? Uh, I don't believe he was. And why not? Uh, I don't, I don't know. Why did your sire wish you to be, uh, altered to look like him? Did you not find this in any way suspicious? This happened immediately after I was embraced. I, I couldn't really ask any questions. Well, I mean, that's usually how embrace them. I will, again, shrug toward Hassan. Like, the one oh, thing I will... This doesn't satisfy me, but... The one thing I will bring up is for the two of you that are more experienced, you do know that La Sombra obviously can't see the reflections and mirrors, and sometimes they do become sort of obsessed with their own reflections. So, as a Zamitsi, you have heard of La Sombra going into debt to Zamitsi to basically craft favored ghouls, things so, like that. Yeah, again, that's why I shrug toward you, Hassan, and say, mm, it doesn't, you know, there's no, I still think that, I still think he should be killed, but. <laughs> you this know, is a conversation happening possible. directly over him. <laughs> yes. It's possible he could be telling the truth. I see. Quite a conundrum, indeed. Well, not really. I mean, we should just kill him to be on the safe side. Well, I mean, you know, even if he's <laughs> real time, like, what's the difference really between killing him and keeping him as prisoner? If we keep him as prisoner, at least we could have a valuable source of information if it ever comes up again. What does he know? What has he told us? He's told us nothing. Listen, buddy, you gotta tell him. <laughs> <laughs> I see no point in keeping him. He knows nothing. This, all right, this is your. This is the final countdown. All right, you got to give us a reason to like, keep you around. Uh, when I tried to ask my pack about my sire, they didn't really tell me anything. Uh, they said he was uh, <clears throat> misunderstood by a lot of people, and he wasn't very well liked. Uh, okay, Lysia gives a huge <laughs> eye roll. Huge. I mean, it's a whole body eye roll. You're like stoking some tongs in a fire. Hassan is sharpening a knife. You have blood sweat coming down. Sweating. <laughs> like, dude, you gotta give us something. <laughs> Yeah, so Starworth, play it up. There you go. <laughs> You're seeing all this happening. I'm, I'm thinking. <laughs> <laughs> John is the most worried public defender <laughs> in the world. Well, I, I do remember that when uh, the the... The people who attacked us, the, the um, vampires who attacked us, I believe, they were, they, they didn't resemble humans. They looked like monstrous creatures. Okay, Lizia will perk up at this. Monstrous how? Uh, I tell them. Just describe these. them? Yes. They were all monstrous in different ways, but you can describe the most, you know, standoutish ones. 
so it is possible that that could be signs of some sort of demonic investments, again, more evidence towards infernalism. Well, it could also be Tsumitsi. Could also I be... I was going to say, is it... Are they, like, the voice or whatever? It didn't seem to be what he's describing as you... You question him about the specifics, right. and it doesn't seem to match vicissitude. It's... Okay, so it seems to be more infernalist than uh, of the Zemitsi. That's your expert opinion as a Koldun. As I, you know. So I will, I will share that with the group. I, I see. I question him closely. Brandishing the red hot poker. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see. So where would you like to go from here, then? So what do we know about the St. Castellan? Um, you don't really know that much about him, and it's like, possible could... also, he claims to not know, he seems to be having trouble thinking, so you're not sure he could just be maybe not that smart. Um, but the other possibility is that he may be under some sort of dominate effect as well, because you do mm -hmm. know the Sombra have that. Does the bishop have any sort of dominate? Um, yes. Obviously, because he's, he he's done the homeless. Yes. Um, Although, you can't make use of him until you're true sabbat, because part of oh, the mission true. was... Okay, that we are on our own. Part of the mission is that we do this on our own. But St. Castian, if he's not here, is not necessarily part of the mission, so that's something right. you could wait on until after you yeah, we could. deal um, with the traitor. So I will... So what does my gut tell me? Can I do like a wits plus right. a cult? What does my gut tell me? Is this actually infernal? Is there enough evidence to let me think, eh, right. I'm going to lead toward infer infernalism here? Give me a wits plus awareness. Uh, well, that's not going to be very good. Um, that's five. That's not bad, actually. I, I do not have a specialty for wits. I need a specialty for wits. Good. Infernalism. <laughs> yeah, infernalism. Is what I need. Um, you're starting to get kind of a hinky feeling. Okay. So, so and now being, obviously, and being a voodoo priestess, yeah. I listen to my intuition. So I'm gonna be like, you know, this may be more than originally. It doesn't seem, it definitely doesn't seem like Tremere magic, which is who the, you know, mm -hmm. the traitor is supposedly working and, with. And I know, we, we had an yeah. Antutra Boo here. I've got hermetic yeah. things that I'm like, you know, I feel like I'm confident in this, that we may be dealing with infernalism here. Again, Hassan and I will share a look because we know if it's something bigger than what we were originally assigned, <laughs> we can get some prestige. <laughs> This would reflect quite the will on my sire. So I guess that uh, well. John is probably thinking in terms of he could impress Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes. you don't know really that much about Sabbat politics. You're yeah, like, you're still, infernalism? You're still bit, but we're like, I'm like, this could be infernalism. And yes, in character, uh, aside from, you know that, like, it sounds like demon worship, but you've never heard of, like, infernalist vampires. John. So if you want to play the, the Jean... If you want to, uh, if you want to play the fanboy and 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 ask the stupid question. <laughs> well, guys, I'd like a rundown. What's infernalism mean? Oh, this ah. is where I will wax philosophic about By all means, go demon ahead. worship and how the good and the evil and the whole. If I had a, a sermon of Cain prepared this is where it would come out but i don't i have to read the book um but anyway that she just goes in lisa just goes into a hole she and, explains and, basically everything that you know in character about your infernal, eyes out of character in infernalism at the end of this okay apparently right. and hassan can add some things too apparently both the asamite clan the asamite clan has been very strongly against uh infernalists and so is the sabbat <clears throat> in general yes so a lot of people accuse cold dunes of consorting with demons, so. But of course we do not. But they do not. All right. 
Is 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 Joseph unstaked? <laughs> yeah. He to this. <laughs> so he hears all this as well about demons. <clears throat> if it uh, jogs any uh, again, we still have the red hot poker and the sharpening yeah. knife. If it jogs any of your memories, the other you thing might want to spurt it out. The other thing you can do uh, while they're, you know, handling him is if you want to start examining the necklace, you can now be yes, in your lab. Yes, I would like to uh, examine the necklace up That's in my lab. That's intelligence before. plus occult. That is I could do an image search seven. on those signals as well if you want. If you wish to. If you wish to, yeah, let's take a picture with your phone. You can run an image search on your hacking and the dark web. The internet's that pretty would be cool, awesome. You know? no. Okay. How much was it? I'll, I'll, do, I'll do the magic stuff. Seven. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, yes, this is uh, a something you've heard about. It's definitely hermetic. Um, it is a phylactery of recorded memory. So it's a little talisman and um, memories kind of like skills and things and also possibly some subconscious things sometimes filter in as well. But basically, huh. you record your skills onto it and then you can give it to another person and they can get better. How do I access this? Um, it's just you put it on and it'll just filter in probably basically over the course of a day the, when you sleep you can just put it on and All by the right. next night well, it'll that's be happening. inside your head so you're putting it on yes okay I'll give that an attempt no risk yeah you know Lizzie is a risk taker <laughs> Right. She she does not have low self esteem, so she's confident <laughs> in her uh, abilities. So yeah, the next time you see Lizzie, that necklace that she was examining, she's wearing it. Cool. All right. So I don't know what does uh, what does Jean there find on his image search? Uh, that nothing. That it's some sort of poison amulet that's gonna kill me. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't really find anything on it. Okay. <clears throat> The best way with magic is to just dive right in. Yeah. So it is getting near the day, unless you want to definitely kill Joseph before you go to bed. My vote is to hold off. I mean, I'm not saying, no, we don't kill him. I'm just saying we don't kill him now. All right. Is everyone else okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. All right. <laughs> you get no vote. You're, you're staked again. Are you going to stake him I'm... before he goes to sleep for the day? <laughs> uh, I will let him have a night's rest, to be polite. Okay, well, day's rest, but yeah. A day's rest, yes. Okay. So, Extra talk so, humanity. The day passes, and everyone uh, takes off a blood point, uh, and <laughs> Stalworth, you're now getting very hungry. Um, and during the day, the necklace takes effect on you. Mm -hmm. So first, the gameplay effects. Um, okay. So if you already have a skill that was implanted in there, it doesn't necessarily get better. Okay. Like, it's only if they're better at it than you were. Okay. Um, so there may be more things that you don't know about. Um, so uh, what is if your investigation score is currently lower than five, which I believe uh, it is. It is. It's zero. All right. Then you gain one die to any die roll that uses investigation. Investigation. So I got a dot in investigation. Yay. Basically, it's not actually a dot. Do I have to continue dot, but, to wear yeah. the amulet the whole time? Yes, you have to continue okay. to keep it on. So I, okay. It's my amulet now. I will neglect to tell anybody else <laughs> that this amulet does <laughs> anything. All I'll right. just be like, oh, it's just, it was nothing. Theoretically, if you gave it to someone else, after a day's sleep, they could also use it. But would I lose? You lose it, yeah, yes. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's the not The moment my side. you take it off, you lose it. Mm -hmm. um, and then putting it on, it takes a day's sleep to so take effect. So it's my necklace now, is what I'm saying. All right. That's what I'm, All just, right. I, I'm just... I, I can't really complain. Okay. <laughs> All you right. You all don't know what it does. I'm just wearing it now. <laughs> uh, so you also start to see uh, memories during the day mm -hmm. that come up, and you see a uh, like a location, like what looks to be a private haven, and you're seeing it, you're walking around, although for some reason you're looking up at everything like you're a child. 
Or I'm a dwarf. Uh, that's one possible interpretation, yeah. Okay. Um, and so you're kind of looking around, and you're kind of looking out of the city, and then that's just kind of the only flash you get. Okay, but I could remember this haven. You could may you could remember what it looks like inside, and you could maybe try and find your way to it based on looking out the window. But that would be. But maybe we should ask Joseph again, on this next night, where their haven was, or. Well, I don't know. This is the midget, so I have. A He's part of a different pack. He's part of a different pack. So if I look at like a city, a map of the city, mm -hmm. and try and envision various neighborhoods, could I get a somewhat close location to where this yeah. cityscape is? With some effort, you could eventually try and track it down based on your memories. Okay, so I will attempt to do that to give us a lead. All right. So it would probably help if you actually went out into the city and could look. All right. So let's let's take a drive. I, I'm having a premonition. Again, I'm not mentioning the amulet. <laughs> having a premonition, being voodoo priestess. Mm-hmm. I'm going to play up on that. Having a premonition about possibly where this midget may previously have been. Shall we go, then? I believe so. If, if John would like to drive us around. All right. Are you going to be taking Joseph with you? Now, that's the question. Do we leave him staked and chained in the cells? I would not leave him alone. Or do we take him in the trunk? I would um, have him in the trunk. That would be okay, my suggestion. Okay, so that's one vote. John, what do you think? I have no preference. Uh, well, we've got a portable supply of possible extra info, you know, makes sense to go along. All right, then I will leave it to you to put him in the trunk. You're going to get pulled over and a cop's going to be like, can I look in the trunk? You're like, no. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. It is our no. first... Oh, no, wait, damn, we're in Montreal. I don't know if they have that First Amendment. Yeah, they don't damn have it. any laws in Montreal. Shit. You have no freedoms or protections. God, no, they can look in the trunk without permission. Yeah. Damn it. Like <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I yeah. know you're from like so, yeah. a Caribbean island or whatever, but listen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the right. laws. Right. I have no idea. Jean, we're gonna trust you on this. <laughs> you have the right to remain silent until the torture equipment has been brought into play. At that point, you know what? I'm just fusing a policeman <laughs> into like a, a big blob. So you know, whatever. All right. Anyway. I didn't take a closer look and you push him into the trunk. <laughs> exactly. And you're melded with Jean, with Joseph in the trunk. Anyway. That's true. I don't think you mentioned it during your tour, but there is basically a blood bank in the haven, and when you take stuff out, you are supposed to bring stuff back. Oh, is there a blood bank? I didn't see yes, there the is. blood bank in the thing. It's in the PDF. Oh, I didn't read the PDF. That's why I'm reading the Word document, not the PDF. Yep. All right, so apparently we do have a blood bank, but we, uh, well, the policeman could be part of that. Anyway. We'll go ahead. All right. So you What's head out. So I'm driving around. I'm looking. Down. All right. So give me a uh, perception plus I'm investigation. Like, I'm all like I'm all like voodoo priestessing it. Uh, perception plus investigation. Mm -hmm. That is now four. With my amulet. All right. So yeah, Jean, you're driving, and so Sean. give yeah. So give me a wits plus dexterity or wits plus uh, drive. Five. Okay. So Lesia keeps like yelling very conflicting, confusing yeah. instructions to you. Over there! No! No! <laughs> Over there! No! No! But you manage to there. keep your head and you take her the way you need to go. <laughs> she All keeps right. wanting you to go down like one way streets the wrong way. Turn left! Turn left! <laughs> I can't. <laughs> turn that turn way, left yeah. as soon as you can, Jean. Turn left! I will turn left as soon as I can, Lizia. And eventually you guys pull up outside of kind of a nice-ish uh, apartment building um, in kind of the downtown area of Montreal. Can I get out? I'm all, like, food priestessing. I'm running yeah. into the lobby. Do I recognize anything? Uh, you're pretty sure this is the building. Looking up, this looks like the... What you floor feel like did I think place. I was on? Um, you just start checking floors and once you're in there kind of the memories start to take over a little bit more just if you let yourself yeah oh i am open flow. i am open to the experience you head up 
to the uh, I'm doing some ritual dances. You head up uh, to the building and you go down until you find a room that you feel like is probably the room you need to go into. This is it. And I will just stand there. All right. Like in some sort of pose. This is it. A T pose. Yes. And oh, and good. she says nothing more other than this is it. Uh, so this is it? What's that mean? This is the room. Okay. So he's going to be in here. Can I check for auras? Can I see an aura inside? Perception plus empathy. Seven. Okay. You do not see any auras inside. Um, I, I think he might be gone. I'm not sure, but uh, don't see any auras in there. I will break my pose. I will look at him. There may be clues. We should go inside. Then I will strike yeah, my pose I'm just, again. I'm just letting, trying to <laughs> let you know, you know? All right. Stop being so literal. I'm in my pose again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the, the necklace has had an odd effect on her. <laughs> Indeed. Does anyone know a way to get in? <laughs> you guys are just standing well, outside oh this door. Oh my god, are you serious? Yeah, 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 I, I can... Do you I know if anyone is inside? Well, that's what he checked yeah. for, ors. no one's inside. Then break it down. Well, I can I can pry open the door more discreetly. Very well, if you would prefer. All right, I'll try my best. So I, I give it a go. I kick open the door now. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you I doing? I actually do that. Uh, so I'd like to take the lock. All right. So the other thing you notice is that you're in kind of an upscale condominiums, and it looks like there are security cameras and things around. Um. And there are people, like, walking through, so it may be difficult for you to have the time necessary to lockpick it open. On the other hand, uh, if you made the noise of kicking down a door, um, that would also obviously draw attention. Um, Alright, sorry, alternative plan since we're gonna do it quickly. Let's wait for a break in the people, and uh, whoever it was who kept, like, making no sound happen, if they could do that while we kick open the door, maybe. I'll look at Hassan. Oh, so it was him doing that. Yeah. Could you do that and then kick the door open? That would be cool. If only y'all had somebody that didn't appear in security footage. <laughs> oh, we're on security footage, but, you know. Yeah. I'm doing my priestess thing. How many cameras are on this corridor? Um, not too many. If you, They do cycle off you, so you could find a time to do it. All right. Yeah, well, I'll do that. What do you say? All right, cool. So, all right, to it quietest and kick open the door. All right, give me your strength. Oh, that's I'm gonna buff it blood so it's free. Okay. Yep. So you put your foot into it and it bangs open without the bang. Yeah. And Good. you guys open. You guys all hustle in and then close the door behind you. Make sure nothing is obviously broken. I'm open to the experience again. What memories am I perceiving? Um, not really anything now that you're inside. Okay, I don't let the pack know that. <laughs> <laughs> I go into you're a meditative. I go into a meditative trance. Okay. Would anyone like to make a perception plus investigation roll to search? Yeah, sure. Be useful. <laughs> Seven. That's All right. Okay. We'll start with Jean since he may just find everything. John. 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 Jean. Okay. And then, Hassan, what's yours? Five. Okay. And you have three dots of aspects? Jean? Yep. Jean? Okay. Absolutely. Um, so, yeah, between the two of you, you find pretty much everything looking around this place while the Zmitsi's meditating. <laughs> um... So, Hassan, you, uh, searching the bedroom, you find a couple of things. Inside the bedroom closet, there is a small safe, um, but it's locked, and you don't really know the code. Um, and then under the bed, you find a sawn-off, double-barreled shotgun. 
Huh. And it is loaded. I will unload it. All right. And what does uh, John um, find? Oh, it looks like the ammunition in it is uh, it's two incendiary rounds, although they're homemade. You're not sure how good they are. Um, and also you don't find any, like, refills for it. It's basically a one Do and Do we done. have any clues of where this guy has gone? Um, I'm getting there. Okay. So, uh, John, what you find is uh, you're looking around kind of the main area and uh, calling on all of your knowledge of what people do in movies. You check the phone and see if there is, like, a writing pad next to it. And when there is, oh, you, you obviously you do, do the, the private eye thing where yeah. you take a rubbing. Yeah. And, uh, yes, indentations on it do reveal directions. Um, you, uh -huh. as, a re as a resident here, you would recognize where they go to. It goes to the cross, which is on top of Mount Royal. All right. So we've got something to start with. That's good. And the time written down is midnight. That's written but under no it. No date. No, mid no date. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what time is it now? Um, it's a little ways until midnight. I will alert the guys right away. All right. All right, I'm glad my meditation has allowed you to find these things. Let us go. Yes, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, um, all right, are you taking the, uh, are you taking anything else with you from the place? Uh, the safe would be cool. Can we trans, is it a portable safe? Is it a small enough safe that we can take it out? Is you it could, but it would be hard to explain why three strangers are walking through this building with a, with a safe they're carrying down. You only yeah, have just a signature, but I did, uh, I did turn off Quietus, by the way, yeah. after we got in. Yeah, I figured you'd. It just to yeah, make sure so, you know. So we can talk to each other? Thank you. <laughs> um... All right, so the door is busted. Can, when we leave, can we make it so that it does not look like the board, door has been um, busted in? You can try and do your best. Okay. Um, do we want to try and crack the safe now? Does anybody have safe cracking abilities? I've got a bit of security. All right. Let's, try Let's it. give it a whirl. Give me a... Um, a, I guess it wouldn't really be dexterity. Give me a perception plus security since you're listening for the uh, the tumblers. Hmm. Would the uh, aspects help? Obviously, it pretty much always helps whenever perception comes into play. Five with a specialty. All right. All right. So yeah, after a little while, you manage to get the safe opened up. And inside you find uh, 5,000 American dollars, 5,000 Canadian dollars, and a Colt Anaconda, along with uh, some ammunition for it. Just regular ammunition. Well, uh, that's kind of cool, I guess. Not, not that big a deal, though, I say as I pocket the gun. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> uh, well, that's obviously going into the communal armory, and um, the money is going into the communal bank account. All right. It's all communal. Yes. We are a pack, Jean. Yeah. So, Jean is basically the communal <laughs> bank, so... Uh, <laughs> so, on. that's fine, but we all know <laughs> that it's communal. Obviously. I I will look you dead in the eye and I'll say, part of the pocket. I will make the same <laughs> gesture I had when I had the red hot poker. <laughs> Trust me, part of the pack. <laughs> All right. I would hate to not be a part of this pack. Yeah, that would be very unfortunate if you were not a part of the pack. Yeah. All right. So do you grab the money as well? Of course. Obviously. All right. Um, do you grab the shotgun? Can we conceal uh, the shotgun? But we can... Yes. Okay, we can conceal the yeah. shotgun. Okay. It's sawn off, so you can conceal it. All right, so yes, I believe we should take the shotgun as well. Part of the communal armory. Okay. And the incendiary rounds. Okay. So, uh, yeah. 
And with that, you managed, by the time he opens it, you've barely got enough time. You have to hurry to get to the meeting. Uh, assuming you want drive. to get to the meeting. Drive Jones. On. Well, we don't know that it's tonight. But no, yes, you don't. we'll attempt to get there before midnight because whatever. Midnight could is be. the time. It could be tonight. We don't know. All right. So, you guys uh, head up to the mountain, and as soon as you start getting, like, on the mountain itself, you've kind of heard um, sort of weird stories about the mountain, and once you're on it, you can definitely feel a presence. Hmm. Um, now, you think it's infernal, but of course, you're primed to think it's infernal. Right, right. But it seems like it could be infernal. It seems like this could be infernal. Not necessarily opening myself to that experience. <laughs> Um, so you guys find a parking lot, and the meeting is at the, the big cross on there. Okay, so well. Um, the question is, you start to get a really bad feeling. Do you want, to, what do you want to do with the man in your trunk? <laughs> Alright, so I have a bad feeling about this. Um, and, Jean, you have aspects, and you also definitely, you get an intense, uh, perception that you're in danger here. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not magical or whatever, but I'm getting bad vibes. <laughs> so it may be, uh, this could be a test for, uh, Joseph slash St. Castion. This could be his test. If he, you know, if he's St. Castion, he will run or side with them or whatever. I mean, this could be his, this could be a test for him. That's all I'm saying. Sure, what do you want to do? Bring him with us? Possibility. Uh, well, if, if we have uh, Hassan here doing quiet stuff, you know, he wouldn't be too much of a liability, maybe? You've got the incendiary shotgun. You can blow him away in a second if you need to. You know, he is down to just a few blood points. Yeah. I mean, we've weakened him considerably. Yeah. But, you know, I don't know. I, we don't necessarily know what clan he is, do we? Do we know he's Little a Sombra? Sombra? He's a Sombra? Okay. So, um, in, does... terms of, uh, in terms of keeping him not giving us away if we're trying to sneak around, because I don't think we want to be seen, right? Probably not. Yeah. So we use Quietus, and he won't be a big problem. I don't know of any La Sombra telepathy. Do mm. I? No? No. Okay. Not like that. Okay. I don't know. What do you think, Hassan? Hmm. I see no reason not to develop this plan further. All right. So you unvicissitude him. I will yes. unvicissitude him and unstake him. All right. <laughs> Start with the stake is pulled out yet again, and this time your hands and legs are free. Excellent. Good evening. Hello, sir. <laughs> ah, you've become polite. A step in the right direction. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'll stand up and get away from him. All right. So they let you get up out of the trunk, and you find that you're on uh, Mount Royal. He's down. You're also at two blood points. Yeah. And he's like, I will, I, will make... I will finish what Mary the Black Star. <laughs> I I will make very clear to him that he has one chance to prove himself loyal to the Sabbat. We are going into battle against what we do not know. Should you run? Should you betray us? Should you not give your life in service to us? <laughs> you will be hunted down and worse than killed. Okay, that's fine. Uh... <laughs> Is it? Really? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna run, so I'm not gonna betray y'all. So you, you ran know. before. <laughs> I did. I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was in the past. So I'm a new man. Prove it. <laughs> okay. All right. So who has the the shotgun? Who is armed with that? Um, yeah, who took it? Hassan or at least... Sorry, I don't have hands. firearms. I'm I do not guy. need firearms. So, Sean, you taking it? 
I've already got two pistols. He's got a pistol. Does does um? Well, the question is, do you want to give the possible traitor the gun with the incendiary well, I was gonna say, ammo? Alicia could probably handle a shotgun. Hmm. I mean, you, you point and shoot; it's a blast range. It's true. So I, you know, I could probably do a shotgun without. I'm just saying, you know, if you guys want to swap your guns around, now's the time to do it. Okay. Um, so I, I don't want anything that requires aiming of any sort. Uh, difficulty isn't really affected by shotguns. So. I think maybe the guy who's best with a gun should have the most powerful gun, so... Yeah, so you could have that. Yeah, I whatever, have, it's fine. I do have low self-image. <laughs> That's true. Okay, so, I would so never it's fine. Offer that. I would never suggest that in character. I'd be like, well, you know, I've, I've been trained a bit by Messiah, so like, I, I could use the gun, I guess, but, you know, I'll take whichever. You know, I trust him. to to magical arts, so you know, and I'm assuming the Asimite has his own specialized weapons. You did he bring the saber with you? It's in the trunk. In the trunk. Can I get a saber too? We will all just stare daggers <laughs> at him. <laughs> nice, seriously. So, with what what is your character actually good at fighting with? Uh, well, I made him so he'd be good with uh. He'll be really good with, like, you know, any type of physical, you know, sword, stuff like that. But I also gave him some firearms, too. All right. And, you know, he has brawl also, so if he's unarmed, I'm sure he can handle himself, too. So we might give him a gun. Again, with stern warnings that he will be worth the final death, he will welcome the final death when it comes. Okay, so uh, I'm really afraid to lose the communal handgun, so I'll give him the one we found in the safe. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm on record for this. I can't have this come back to me. I'm responsible for this gun. I can't give it to you. <laughs> I love this John. John is John instantly is my right. favorite character. I know. He's like the pusher. <laughs> no, my name's on this. I can't. I can't. I can't. <laughs> Are we quite ready to move on? Oh, man. <laughs> I do unholster my whip. Okay. I'll take my scimitar then. Okay. So you guys arm up and then head out. Are you traveling under the effects of Quietus to disguise any sound you're making? Probably gonna uh, I see no reason not to. Okay. I should, I'll also use... Uh, I'll prepare my... Uh, Blade for decorated damage with three points of that. Okay. So you lick up. Yeah, I'll do it across my palm. So the rest of you just see me slice my blade across my palm for no oh. reason. <laughs> well, He's not I licking assume. it like the world's most wonderful phallus. <laughs> well, you know that would. I, you know, I've been with the twins. Uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, I imagine Sean would probably be a bit surprised that I just cut myself open. <laughs> yeah. Please use like. Yeah, that makes sense. Like ritual. Yeah. <laughs> John's having quite an education this year. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What clan was what clan was Hassan again? What? What what clan are you? Are you asking in character or in character as as we're moving? Oh, well, yeah, in character like while you're doing that shit. I'm like, so what clan were you? I'm a Hassan. Assassin. Assassin. Uh, huh. Okay, okay. Um, have, has Olivia taught me about Asimites? Um, yes, they are a clan that is kind of dedicated to a sort of god figure called Hakim. Um, she, there were a lot of them in the Sabbat for a while because there was a whole thing with curses. Um, but kind of they're cert currently on the outs with the Sabbat, the Antitribu, because some magic stuff happened and a lot of them defected is how it was put to you. You know, that's pretty much the history of all vampirism. <laughs> Some, Some magic, magic stuff, stuff happened, happened and a lot of them <laughs> defected. <laughs> and a lot of people betrayed each other, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so since then, kind of m new ass minds have come in, some have left, so really no one trusts the clan that much because they don't know where their real loyalties lie. Okay, so he's a paid assassin. But Lizia, but Lizia kind of likes this guy because she's already kind of figured out he likes pain. <laughs> <laughs> he is also fucked up. <laughs> All right. All right. 
All right, cool. Uh, well, not good. I'm glad to have someone like you. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> good I response. Didn't expect, I didn't expect him to say likewise or anything. I love <laughs> Jean, and I love the straight men he's acting mm -hmm. off of. <laughs> 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 All right, so you guys head there, and you can finally see the cross in the distance. You guys sneak up, no problem, because there's no sound around you. Um, as you are getting close, you can start to hear... Um, uh, Jean can overhear um, them talking. Um, the midget seems kind of desperate. He's like, you've got to get me out now. There's no, you know, cover anymore. Um... That's just what you overhear, and as you guys are getting closer, you can see the Tremere seems to, or the guy he's talking to, seems to react to something. And then, a moment later, he looks towards where you guys are basically hiking up, jogging up the mountain towards mm -hmm. him. They've seen us. Um, so now they start shouting at each other, and all of you can overhear. Uh, the minute's like, take me with you! And as... He's kind of coming towards him. The other guy is backing off and actually floating up into the air as he backs up. Magic. So this definitely signals to you that he's a Tremere. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so the Wonders. midget is basically begging for him to come back for him as this guy flies off into the distance. So at that, he kind of turns, looks down at you, and then he starts sprinting. So it's a I'm ready for him to... All right. All right. Strength. Uh, well, we're in quietest, so I'll try to shoot him as well. All right. Uh, so you're shooting him. You're running after him, Hassan. Yeah. I will. Um... Yeah. I oh guess yeah, I'll and I'll activate celerity since that's fast. <laughs> yeah. Oh. <laughs> Probably a good idea. I can go fast. I forgot. All right. I go fast. All right. So that's, that's that's next are you running first, after him? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and. Uh, Joseph, are you running after him? You damn well better, Joseph. <laughs> you are running after him. Otherwise, I'll pick you up and carry you. Because Lysia off. is running the after him diet. after she looks at Joseph. <laughs> Joseph. Stalworth. Stalworth. Oh, it's Stalworth. Yes. So, are you running? Oh, um. um. Did everyone else run? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, yes. All right. Yeah, I was going to say, so Lizia is behind Joseph making okay, a whip run. Okay, so strength plus athletics from um, everyone who's running. That's two for me. Okay. I know I'm going to be behind, but that's okay. I want to keep All an right. eye on Joseph. Joseph, strength plus athletics. Six. Okay. You better prove yourself here. That was only five. Okay. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. And then, uh, Hassan. Strength plus athletics, yeah. Yep. Six. All right. Okay. And, uh, John. So, he's, he's slightly out of, he's out of range of your shotgun, you're thinking. Because what, how much firearms do you have? Too. All right, you think he's out of range of your shotgun, but you can take a shot at him with your uh, pistol. So, yeah. Um, will I be able to run while doing that? Um, no. Okay. But if uh, your pistol's well... in range. So, I mean, I'm the guy with celerity, so maybe it should be my responsibility to chase after him the most. But Which... I will say, I also, actually, my strength plus athletics is only three. I don't know how that factors in. All right. Basically, it's two moves, so it's so three and three. run closer, get in range, then shoot. Well, you can't run. You can't use celerity this turn. It's oh, next okay. turn. Next turn. Yeah, so I can't use celerity anyway, so I'll shoot first. All right. So, dexterity plus firearms. Five. All right. So, you do manage to clip this guy. Alright. Alright. So, yeah, you uh, hit him in the shoulder. You guys are sprinting after him. 
he has a little bit of advantage because he's already kind of at the top of the hill and you're hiking up to it. Um, but you, uh, two of you, uh, Joseph and Hassan, just book it up there. And when you get up there, you can't seem to find him. But you look around a little bit and you do see basically a hatch closing. Hmm. I then immediately right? open the hatch and look down. All right. Well, I won't like stare down. I think he's just gone. I'll just peek inside. Okay. Yeah, it looks dark inside. It looks like possibly some sort of maintenance access. Well, is there a? Do you jump down or is there a ladder? There is a ladder, although you then don't. I'll see uh, him immediately down there so it's possible he jumped as well. You can't see the bottom. I'll quickly grab a rock and toss it down as fast as I can. Alright, it seems like you could make it without killing yourself. Without getting injured? Um, It depends on how your stamina goes. Uh, I have cat-like balance. That would probably help. Yeah. yeah right. I'll, I'll jump down. Alright. And Joseph, you see Hassan jump down this hatch. Uh, I'll ask, did, are you alive? Am I? Uh, yeah. What is your stamina? Stamina free. And you have cat -like balance? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you land. No damage. I'm fine. Hurry. I shall hurry down after him. Alright, what is your stamina? It is two, but I also I have cat-like reflexes. <laughs> Not quite the same. <laughs> All right. You can All respond right. quickly to you crushing. You, uh, <laughs> hoof as you hit the ground, uh, and you do not take any damage. Awesome. So, Lesia, you just see uh, Joseph jumping down. Okay. And are you running up with celerity, uh, Jean? Uh, yeah. All right, so you catch up with Lesia, and you guys both see Joseph jump down. Uh, okay, I will climb down the ladder. Okay. Jean? I'll try to climb down. All right. So you go through yeah. uh, some maintenance areas, and you're not sure. Um, some of these these areas look really kind of abandoned, and it was a little ways off to the side. So you're not sure if anyone knows these are still here, uh, or if mm -hmm. anyone comes down here very often. Can I try to see him through a wall with all specs? Um, it's basically, you can hear, there's really only one way for you to go. It's not really a maze. So. Oh, okay, I was expecting a maze. Yeah. So you're heading down through these, and there's, like, pipes and wires and things, and it seems to be getting older as you're going further down. Um, and eventually, you guys uh, emerge out. You hit this uh, door, which emerges out into what looks to be a tunnel of some kind, and you can see there are... Well, Jean, when he gets up there, can see that there are tracks, uh, like a subway. Hmm. Well, it's uh, Subway. Where did he go? Attempt to find him. Alright, perception plus empathy. Seven. Alright. Yeah, you can see his aura in the distance. Off to your uh, right. Yeah, he's that way. Still running away. Alright. Still staying in the back of the group. Okay, so it is another strength plus athletics from everyone. We it's can. Still six for me. All right. I'll prep another slay. Six. Okay. And yours was four. Uh, strength plus that's good. No, that's a whopping two. <laughs> oh. That's why I'm I'm, I'm purposely staying in the back of the group. This is you know. Final later. Well, it's not purposely, is it? Well, well it's it purposefully is, and yeah, unpurposefully. Purposefully and unpurposefully. All right, so you guys keep charging after him, and Lizzie, you kind of start to fall behind a little bit. That's fine. Um, and you guys stop. Um, you guys find him stopped a little ways down the tunnel, and everyone kind of starts to catch up, and he is basically standing off to the side at a little like alcove in the wall. Um, basically pounding oh on it and oh uh, pleading for help. 
I'll go over there and grab him. Pull him right. back. Do I do I hear a train coming? Uh, you do not. Yeah, am I listening with my aspects? Uh, yeah. Give me a perception plus alertness. Five. You don't believe you hear anything. All right. I stand off to the side of the track. So as you grab him, you kind of pull him away, and you find out that his arms are detached from him. Basically, his skin just comes off, and the bone just separates so that at the elbows, they're still, like, hanging on to, like, pipe that runs along in this alcove. And he starts uh, screeching in pain. Uh, you can see, like, black Icarus ooze is coming out of the wounds. And he just starts screeching. When do I catch up? Uh, around this point. Okay. Can I, uh, intelligence plus occult this? Uh, it's not good. Okay. Um, and you know, start I am to... not touching the goo. Okay. And as he's screeching, he's kind of flailing it around. So it's kind of starts splattering all over the place. Um, I'll cover myself in my cloak to make sure I don't get any on me personally, at least. Okay. Yeah, I'll back away. All right. Joseph? Bathing in the stuff. That's what he's just like, bring it on. Stalwart. So we fight now, huh? No. Are, you, are you getting black goo on you or not? Am I getting black goo? Yeah. Yeah. Are you, this, are yeah. you standing there getting the black goo on you? Or Everyone you else is trying away? to avoid it. Everyone else jumped away? Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm also going to jump away. All right. So, um, you start, uh, Jean, you don't know, but anyone else can give me perception plus alertnesses. Five. Four. Okay. All right. So, Leslie, you notice that there seem to be uh, figures in the tunnel with you. Like, you can hear the sounds of, like, footsteps around okay, you. I scream out, there are others. And so, in the darkness, also, the only one you can really see is the one with Auspex. The rest of you can barely see in front of you. Your eyes still aren't fully, you know, mm -hmm. they're adjusted, but there's only so much adjustment that can go. All right. All right. What do I see? Uh, as Lesia points them out, you can see, like, hideously deformed creatures, very similar to the description that, uh, Joseph gave you. Hi, uh, guys, the demons are here. All right, we're, we're whipping it out. We're whipping it out now. All right, so the, uh, yeah, the midget just keeps, like, just spraying. He just... Just kill him. In Hassan's hands, he's just spraying the Hassan, black goo Hassan, kill him. And screeching and kicking his legs. All right, then I kill him. All right. I take my sword and I drive it through him. All right. So, then I slash him. It's a slashing sword. So I assume you just kind of like are holding him like a baby. Then you just throw him down the ground, sword out, head off. Yeah. All right. He is basically in no position to resist you. Like the head comes clean away. Um, and the creatures are still coming. And you can see the, the, where the black goose was. It seems like it's burning almost like acid or something. Okay, hmm. avoid that. And, uh, that's yes. Similar to, that's similar to what I can do with mine. And the, uh, the monsters seem to be surrounding you. They're on either side of the tunnel. It's called Dunic Sorcery. It's not in that book. Of course not. Is it in the Sabbat book? No, it's in another book. What do you want to look up? I want to know what one dot does. <laughs> I know what you, remember, you have the power to create an image in the water. Damn, that's not gonna help me at all. Is there any water? I'm like, I need to know what I can do. Well, uh, I'll, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to fucking fire the, the fire. You're gonna fire a blast away? I'm gonna modify myself into some sort of pointy arm thing that I can, well, with my whip and then a stabby thing with my arm. Because the other thing you can do is, when you're fighting, you don't even necessarily need to vicissitude yourself. You could also I can vicissitude, vicissitude them. them. Okay, so that's that's what I'm planning. Basically okay. just pull people apart. All right. All right. So, well, Jean opens fire first, so dexterity okay. plus firearms. Five. And you have your celerity still, so you can fire both barrels at two different targets if you want. I fucking will. Right. Do you say five? 
Yeah. All right. And I'll prep celerity for next turn. Okay. So you blast a hole at one of them. And with the fire, it's actually a little bit easier to see. Um, but you strike it full in the chest, it starts shrieking and just falls on the ground, just scuttling around like some sort of man spider. Or a spider man. Woo! Spider people! Ooh, spider. And then your second shot, you move over and you hit him as well. Oh yeah, you hit him dead on, and he also, it's the same thing. So you have two basically flaming spires, and that basically illuminates the area for the rest the of you. How many others are there? Um, a couple dozen in the direction you're facing. Okay, a couple dozen. It so. looks like it. Maybe it's only one dozen. It's hard to tell. 12 to 24 of these. Between 12 and 24, yes. But we've killed the thing that we have came here to kill. Yes. The midget. If we focus on one way, we can make it clear and break out of here. I was going to say, we may need to retreat. Are there any behind us? Uh, yes. There's okay. another at least half dozen to dozen there. So we should we should concentrate on behind us. We've com we've done our mission. Killed the midget. <laughs> and now we're tactically Time retreating. Now we escape. So I say we, we, we concentrate on what is behind us. The half dozen behind us. The six behind us. Rather than the 24 in front of us. So let's run away. Sound assessment. Let's okay. go. All right. All right. So, uh, Leslie, we'll do you next. Okay, so, I'm going to vicissitude the hell out of whatever's in front of Dexterity plus brawl. Um, that is four. All right. Uh, you do not manage uh, to strike the creature. Okay. Um, and it actually, you kind of find yourself off balance, and you feel like a weird, slick, wet hand Can on I you. quickly go strike it? Uh, yes. Give me dexterity plus melee. That is eight. The specialty. Alright, what is your strength plus... I think scimitar is like plus three damage. I think scimitar is plus two, but strength plus scimitar, uh, five right now. We still pop up, because why not? Okay. It's aggravated. Well, maybe a regular scimitar is plus two, but this is Damascus steel. <laughs> okay, yeah, this is, this is plus seven. All right. <laughs> yeah, so you hack this thing off. Um, you do still feel like this weird slippy goo on slippy you. that slimy thing on me. Yeah. Ew. And then the hand just kind of slides off you once he cuts it free. But I give you a nod, Hassan, and stand back up. Uh, and Joseph, not back. <laughs> what are you doing? Um... You damn well better be <laughs> fighting. Fight. <laughs> um, how many more enemies are there behind us? Uh, there's like there's five now that Hassan's killed this one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, would it be better if I shot him or I, if I hit him? It's up to you. You have a melee weapon, right? I have my fists. <laughs> well, or whatever you're confident with. They look kind of slimy and oozy. You're not sure exactly how much you want to punch them, but it's up to you. All right. Well, I suppose I'll just I'll just shoot them then. All right. Dexterity plus firearms. That'll be eight. All right. Uh, yeah, you hit. What is, uh, oh, it's the Anaconda. I think that, has, I know the damage on that. All right. Yeah, so you strike one basically directly in the forehead, and these things don't even seem quite like people to you because obviously it's a powerful gun, but this thing, its head comes apart like an overripe melon. Like, these people seem to just be falling apart when you attack them. That's nasty. All right. And uh, so we'll come back around. The monsters start closing in on you. And up ahead of you, uh, Jean, you can see there are more of the creatures coming out of the walls the direction that you're trying to head to. 
So, and it is your turn. You have Celerity up and active. Uh, let's see. My shotgun would require a reload, right? Um, well, you don't have any more incendiary ammunition for it, or any ammunition for it, and also the barrels are melted and deformed. Alright, so I'll just throw the fucking shotgun at one of them and pull out the pistol. Okay. Dex plus Are they one. so overripe that they explode when I throw a shotgun at them? Uh, not that overripe. Do it just kind of gets stuck inside them. Do they seem like zombies Gross. of any sort? Um, possibly. It's one way to describe them, I guess, but hmm. it's not All necessarily. Right, well, so I spend a blood point for next celerity and I'll fire with a pistol. So Dex well, I fire figure I five. would be versed in zombies. It doesn't seem like a voodoo zombie, no. Okay. All right. So yeah, you uh, strike one of them in the chest, and it kind of backs up. It doesn't fully fall apart, so it seems like it does require some level of damage to destroy them, but not as much as maybe a regular person or vampire. Hmm. Um, and as you guys are firing, these things are coming out ahead of you, and then they kind of seem to stop. And you hear a weird sound. It's almost like singing coming down the tunnel towards you the way that you're headed. Hmm. Can we understand the words? Um, no, you can't. It seems like some sort of gibberish, or perhaps, you know, chanting in some sort of language you don't understand. Hmm. 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 That's not good. So what do you guys want to do? It seems like the creatures are kind of moving back away in that direction, like they're retreating. All right. Well, Lizzie's got to figure out what this thing is. Mm -hmm. She's going to grow some balls. She's going to walk forward. She's going to figure out what this thing is. All right. So Lizzie is continuing to head in that direction. What about the rest of you? I will do the same. I think we're trying to still retreat. Okay. I'll stick with the group, then. Joseph? I will, uh... We, we're, well, we're retreating, right? Yeah. Yes. Then. Retreating yet going toward the thing that's singing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll also do that, then. So the creatures kind of part way for you. And up ahead, um, they all kind of still are following after you, but only saying a certain distance. And ahead of you you can see, well, Jean can see a couple of figures. Um, one of them is also horribly disfigured, but not quite in the same way. He looks like a Nosferatu. He's all bloated and corpse-like. Um, and with him is another figure, which is uh, bound up with uh, like a bandana over her eyes, like blindfolded. Um, and she seems to be the one that's actually singing. And as you guys come close, the uh, bloated figure motions for you guys to follow him. I'll go forward. All right, so he starts basically rushing away, and the creatures are still kind of following behind you at a distance. Okay. So he leads you guys off of the mountain, out of the tunnel, into the, you know, the rest of the city. And once you start leaving the mountain itself, the feeling of infernalism starts to change, and the monsters also start to back up as well. Okay. So once you guys are on your own, he introduces himself to you. He says, I am Elias, also known as the Whale. Have I heard of Elias the Whale? Um, you have not heard of him specifically, but you haven't been in the city for that long. Mm-hmm. He's not part of the Nosferatu kingdom that you're directly allied with. I was going to say, if he's not... But part... not every Nosferatu is part of that. Okay. So. Are you an infernalist? <laughs> uh, no. What were those creatures? I am uncertain, exactly. Uh, I had only... I'm sorry I couldn't come to help you sooner. Uh, I had only... You want to wash that off, by the way. Points to, the, like, the sludge on you. Mm. Yes. 
And so he kind of directs you to, like, some sewer water you can use. It's not cleaner, but... But I'll necessarily... <laughs> if I can get a little sample to analyze later, I would like to do that. All right. Says, I just received word that your uh, pack was investigating these matters. Um and was seen heading towards the mountain. I do not know exactly what these creatures are, but suffice to say something exists beneath the mountain. Do you know anything of the midget? I understood that uh, he was wanted as a traitor, and uh, I heard through a grapevine that some members of your pack were discussing the possibilities of infernalism. That is why I was trying to keep an eye on your comings and goings. And you were not associated with, and I will name the Nosferatu city. I am not. Why? I have... A different pack. I know this I will may give you seem the Larry David look. <laughs> I know this may seem suspicious to you, although I will point out that I did just save your lives. I am currently investigating the possibilities of infernalism here within the city. I am attempting to keep my investigation. If I seem as though I'm not being entirely forthcoming, I am attempting to keep my investigation on a need-to-know basis. I'm not affiliated with the Sabbat Inquisition. However, an Inquisitor is within the city. If definite proof of, or non-indefinite proof of infernalism were to come to their attention, they would quickly begin a series of unfortunate trials, chaos would envelop the city. I am trying to make certain that when infernalism comes to light, we have definite information so there are no unfortunate casualties. Alright, this seems reasonable. As a Khuldun, I am sure you understand why perhaps the ardor of Inquisitors must be carefully directed. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Certainly a member of a clan which is known for defection, or someone who is possibly not who they claim to be, and is on bad standing with the Sabbat, can also appreciate all the reasons. He will look at Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at Joseph, he looks at Hassan can appreciate why Inquisitors trying everyone in the area who seems suspicious may not be the best course of action. So what is your personal opinion of this incident? I am not certain exactly. Uh, whenever canines go under the mountain, they attract the attention of something. This much is known to pretty much everyone within the city. Um, I assume you would have heard the rumors yourself if you had been here longer. Uh, but what exactly the midget was doing is unclear. He seemed to have some sort of alliance with the creature under the mountain. But I don't know any more than that. My friend here, and he indicates the woman who basically has just been standing there not mm -hmm. acknowledging anything, uh, her singing seems to subdue the creatures somehow. Why and how, I don't know exactly. However, I made use of her on necessary occasions when I must investigate or help individuals such as yourself. So, 
you are now free to go, although I ask that you do not mention the particulars of what you witnessed here to anyone. The infernalism. Yes. As far as anyone needs to know, he simply attempted to escape into the sewers where you dealt with him. Should we need to contact you again, how do we do so? Uh, and he gives you a phone number for a burner phone. It says, okay. call that. Very good. I will look at Hassan for confirmation, but I believe we can comply to these requests. Hmm. I'll take a moment to think it over, and I'll respond by saying, I can keep it from my master, but should he inquire about it, I will tell him. I do not lie to my sire. But there are ways to keep that question from occurring, so understood. <laughs> so. All right. Very well. So he will lead you I back. Will look sternly at Jean and <laughs> Joseph and say, it is understood you will not speak of what happened in this tunnel. Understood. Gotcha. All right. Okay. Great. Very well. So um, he gives you directions uh, towards the surface. Um, and yeah, then bids you goodbye. He says, welcome to Montreal. All right. Hmm. So we got infernalism. That's not good. That's not good at all. Yeah. And a possible Camarilla incursion. And a possible Camarilla incursion. Neither one of these is good. So when you return to the uh, lair with Midget's head, mm -hmm. uh, the bishop rounds everyone up and he takes all of you to the the city's communal haven uh, where he says you're going to be the ceremony is going to occur all right so he says normally we'd arrange for a blood feast or something like that but uh we're going to try and hurry the proceedings uh in order to have a special arrangement which ritual are we going through uh, you are going through the, uh, the creation rites. Okay. You're not going to be the one actually performing I know, it. but I just, I, yeah. I want to know what I'm doing. Yeah. What I'm expected. All right. So you guys are taken down into the communal haven, which is beneath a park. Um, it's a big series of, uh, crypts, like, from a, a graveyard that was evacuated, uh, in the past. So, once you're down there, uh, you are presented before a number of people uh, who are introduced to you. The, the bishop basically introduces you to the Archbishop Velez, the Archbishop of Montreal, and her pack, which are the Lost Angels. Okay. Who is the priest? Is it their priest that is overseeing this? Um, not exactly. Um, and then he also, uh, another man kind of steps forward and the Lost Angels kind of part ways and the bishop whispers to you guys that that is the Cardinal of Canada. Um, and his um. name is Kyle, and I can't remember what the last, it's like, look it up. Uh, can you hand me uh, Children of Night? It is on the right there, top shelf. On the right. On the right, top shelf. Children <laughs> of Night. I'm not seeing Children of Night. There it is. Ah, yeah. So his name is Kyle Strathcoma. So he takes you guys in, and he uh, basically says, asks for you guys to step forward and to announce yourselves. 
I'll let one of the experts do that first, so I know what to do. I was gonna say, do. I stand. I do not do. I do not go first. Okay. The rest of your pack has moved off to the side for you guys. For you four. One of you have to go. Come on. I was gonna say it's either Miles or Stallworth. Who's gonna be the uh, arrogant one that stops? That steps forth first. I don't suppose we have an an option not to do it, right? This is official. <laughs> this is the Cardinal of Canada. Oh, you still so... John said. Oh, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> All right. All right. So well, like, it's so, like I'll, you, fine. You I'll go. I'll go first then. No, I'll go first. Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So what do you mean? John so Star of the Clan Toriador. Child All right. of Olivia Martin. All right. Who goes next? I'll go next then. I'll bow courteously. My name is Hassan Isaba, child to Rashid ad Din Sinan. I am of the clan Astamite. All right. I will go before Joseph because he is kind of the uh, cowardly traitor. Um, so I will say. Lizia, I don't know who my sire is. We didn't give a name for my sire. No? So I will say Lizia, my sire's name, Clan Zamizi. Okay. There's only one person left. I am uh, Joseph Manessi from uh, Clan La Sombra. Maybe you shouldn't mention in the sire. Huh? Not mention your sire, no. we're gonna want to know. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know who my sire uh, oh, like, You know uh, who your sire <laughs> You know! Uh, Saint, uh, I'll... Saint Castian, what? but I'm nothing like him! <laughs> yeah, yeah, Saint Castian. I see. Alright. Uh, does each of you swear to serve uh, the Sabbat, to serve the city of Montreal, and to serve your pack. I swear it. I swear it. Swear it. All right. So uh, they step forward, and you can see they've already started to prepare a Baldry chalice, um, and they give it to the three other members of your pack who all uh, participate in it. Um, and then they hand it over for you four to also bleed into it. Of course. Do it. Very well. All right. I don't suppose I have to actually remove a point of luck, because we're going to get it back. You're going to get it back. Yeah. Don't bother. Okay. Right. So, does this get rid of my one that I already have? No. All vinculums, uh, vinculums are cumulative. All right. Interesting. Yeah, you're just going to start liking a lot of different people. Interesting. So, I'll take it. Yeah, whatever. All right. So, once that, he finishes performing the Valdry on it. And then once it is finished, he pulls out a red hot brand uh, with the sigil shine. of the sect on it. He says... I have felt worse. <laughs> he says, uh, swear to serve the Sabbat until your final death, receive the brand, and take a drink. And he will start and with Hassan. I, will, I, will, I was going to say, I will gladly step forward. All right. This is familiar territory. Yeah. All so right. He's you, drinking and getting branded. You yeah, swear? I will. Yeah, why do I want the brand? Do I get to choose? Or. Um, usually they do it on the forehead. The forehead? <laughs> yep. That seems kind of dumb. You heal it eventually. Then what's the point? Uh, it's just to show that you're not afraid. Yeah, okay, I could vicissitude one on you for permanence if you wish. If you go into I the, don't... if you go into the full black hand, you can get a special tattoo that never goes away. No, no, fine. I'll, I'll get it. I just thought it was a brief place. <laughs> Four headed this then. All right. You accept the brand, and he puts it on your head, and you take one point of aggravated damage. All right then. And you can take a drink. I will do so. All right. Just... Okay. All right, just keep that over there. All right. So, uh, because I knew this would be a hell of a lot of dice rolling, uh, I already... 
have you a already... bunch of, uh, I already did all the Baldry stuff earlier, so I'm just going to copy paste it into the chat. And so here's the other thing with the Valdry. Because there is someone here who might uh, have access to Vicissitude, it is possible that you guys, uh, there's a stamina roll, you guys may become infected with Vicissitude as well. Hmm. So, I've already made the stamina rolls for everyone. Um, so, after I give you all the Valdry information on here, there is there may be something that says vicissitude initial cost. And if that is on there, that means you have been infected with vicissitude. How bad your infection is determines the experience point cost to spontaneously begin developing vicissitude. Question. Yes. Yes. Um I kind of don't understand this infected with vicissitude. <laughs> You basically yeah. become infected with Simitsi himself. Yeah, and you Simitsi's can learn this gonna take, o take you over. It is not a good thing, but you can use it to your advantage. <laughs> oh. is fabulous. fabulous. But Simitsi eventually takes you over. So anyway, there will be a experience point cost on there. Um, maybe, maybe not. If it's not on there, then you can't learn Vicissitude. If it is on there, then that's the experience points that it takes. Just send you me. You really hope you really want it to not be on there. Just send me a discreet message if you want to learn it, um, and then I will let you know what the second experience point cost is from there. You know we can work around it. <laughs> so, okay. so let's see. This will be good. All right. So this also has this has your pack on there, and then it also has the uh, pack of the Lost uh, Angels. All right, we are doing Miles's, and I'm sending them in right. secret because you know. Okay, good, good. That was I was going to ask you too. Yeah. I was going to say I didn't. We don't know who. And I sent you the little chart that tells you about what each number means already. Yeah. I have it open. So, some people are going to be <laughs> pleased, some people are going to be upset. <laughs> Who wants to go second? Me. All right. So, John, do you swear to serve the Saban until your final death? Do you accept the brand yeah, yeah. and drink the cup? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you cry out when the brand is placed upon your forehead? I will attempt not to. All right. Self-control. Three. You actually don't, but you can see, like, tears are welling up <laughs> in his eyes, trying so hard. So you take a point of aggravated damage, and here is... Your thing. Alright. You going next? Unless Joseph jumps in front of me, I will go next. Okay. So you accept to serve the Sabbat to final death, accept the brand. Gladly. You, Lizzie is practically orgasming at this point. Alright. Alrighty. Um, and then Joseph. Agree to serve the Sabbat until final death, accept the brand, and drink from the cup? Of course. All right. And here is yours. All right. So that is basically it. Um, it's near dawn at this point, so pretty much as soon as it's over, and the Cardinal's obviously an important man, mm -hmm. so he leaves, like, as soon as it's ready, and it's near dawn, so the bishop takes you back to the haven, where you guys can all okay. get into your rooms. We haven't really shown Hassan his room, so we'll quickly do that. Yeah. Joseph will I, I, I don't need I don't need much. I just need a place to sleep. That's basically what you have. Your room belonged to a city gangrel 
who was kind of an urban assassin. Um, it's basically all concrete. There's no decorations, and the bed is just a plain wooden uh, coffin with no padding. That's fine by me. And Joseph, you just get another um, graphic room that we from a dead guy. The um the people who have already partaken in the um the rollery, do they take it again so they can add us to it or Yes, so th they didn't actually take they put their blood into it and they take it as well. So yes, they have, yes, they have ratings for you guys as well. Okay. And also your rating, the thing that happens is whenever you take a Valdry with someone again, um you roll a D ten is rolled. Um and if it is higher than your current Valdry rating, then your Valdry rating goes up by one. If it's lower than that, then there's no chance. Then it just then stays as it no is. Okay. So the lower the rating is, the more likely it is to start to improve under repeated Valdries. And uh, now that you're true Sabat, your pack priest is now officially a pack priest and can perform the Valdry for you guys. All right. And we do. All right. Let's just let's keep doing it until we all have ten for each other. <laughs> Does so so I am. I don't know how we become pack priests. Is there a ritual for that? No, it's okay. You're granted the promotion. Okay. By the bishop? By the cardinal? By the bishop. Okay. Yeah. Every pack has a priest. The pack just agrees who the priest is. Okay. And everyone already agreed it was going to be you once you were true Sabbat. Well, I worked very hard. I learned all the rituals. All right. So that is pretty much the end of the session. So first off, everyone explain what they learned. I learned about the Valdry. Have you not had the Valdry before? I have not. I have had no need to. Hmm. I learned you can be infected by vicissitude. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't think, okay. I don't think you actually learned that in character. Well, he may it, have. It well, he what may he have. He may oh, he may have. That's right. I don't know. He may have. You don't know. Apparently, we now know that Stalworth learned about vicissitude. <laughs> well, plus, his legs were fused together. I'm not okay, gonna... he learned about the existence of right. I'm not going to confirm or deny anything. You know. he's he's He knows something's a fight. <laughs> something's All a right. fight. Right. Oh, but, Sack, let me just confirm. I haven't been uh, with the Wall Tree before ever, right? I've just been um, loyal to my clan. Yeah, if... Yeah, it's probably not. Um, if you were just in training with your sire, there probably would have been no need for a Wall Tree at that point. This is the first okay, real pack good. you've been involved with. All right, then. Um, so yes, I did learn about the Waldry then. Mary. I learned that there was infernalism and an inquisitor within Montreal. All right, and David. I mean, like, <laughs> I could give you a list. <laughs> <laughs> Just one is fine. Uh, Jean learned about the Asimites. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Jean learned many things. His eyes were opened. <laughs> In this episode. So we are resetting the uh, role-playing award so anyone can win it. Um, so let's go through on a vote. Um, Stalworth had the most chance to observe from a distance uh, from a <laughs> stake trunk. So who are you going to give it to? Um, I, feel, I feel like I have to go with Miles. Okay. Miles, who are you voting for? I would give it to David. All right, David. Uh, Mary with her open experiences, maybe. <laughs> All right, Mary. <laughs> oh, see, now I'm going to be the deciding vote. So it's mine. Unless you give it to Stallworth. Unless you give it to Stallworth. Well, I know, but then that would just be kind of a shitty move, wouldn't it? Yeah. <laughs> just be like, and then what, we have the Game Master change? Yeah. Well, so, that so, happens, so it's fine. You know, I feel like Jean really learned a lot. All right, he really, he really learned a lot. Well, anyway, like, listen, was... you don't understand. It was hard for me to play a guy who knew fucking nothing when I know so much at this stage. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I feel like I feel like you did a good job with that right. naivete. Now, point to a time when you helped out the entire party. We will start with 
Mary? Well, I fused Sawworth uh, limbs into a That's single... That's a good point. ...into a single phallic symbol. Uh, Miles? I... Can we say I saved Lucia? At least help her out significantly at the very end. Okay. I was going to say, you killed Midget. Yeah. Yeah, that, that too. Yeah. All right, and... um, David? I kept everyone's heads cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You did save Joseph's life. You did do some investigation really... as well. I, yeah, I got the safe for the communal yeah. phone. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then, um, oh, there's also a safe in your room as well. That you're eventually going to need to crack. Now that well, you've now that shown everyone. Yeah, we can handle that uh, after the experience is handed out. Um, Stallworth. Uh, I, uh... I provided valuable information about, uh... <laughs> he didn't about betray us. Issues. Okay. All right. So, uh... David, you are getting eight experience points. Everyone else gets seven. All right. Um, one of the things I really like is that after all the trouble he went into making the retainer, Stallworth spared not one thought for his retainer. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, like, mention her I, I thought about it. I just, you know, with my legs and arms being... That's true. She's, he's like, you know what? I'm in a shitty position. I'm not going to bring her into this. <laughs> I had to worry about my life first before I start asking about hers. All right. So, yeah, that is the end of the stream. So, uh, uh, we will see you guys later. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.